wish you a terrific Sunday afternoon as we are just about 15 minutes away from the start of game three of this three game set. It's the final game of the regular season. Number 131 out of 131. Most teams are playing 132. The Blue Crabs had one of those games scrapped as it was going to be a doubleheader here in the final series. They decided, well, you know, it doesn't have any implications in the playoffs, so we'll just go with the traditional three-game set. Well, tonight, the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs will send Ulsis Herrera to the mound, and he faces off against Dominic DiSaventino. So the Blue Crabs will look to get back on the right track after losing the first two games of this series against the Barnstormers here in game three before they start the playoff series against the Barnstormers. We had a chance to catch up with the Blue Crabs designated hitter today, David Harris, before today's ball game, before the final game of the regular season. We're having some technical difficulties with that. We're gonna have a chance to get that to you either during or before today's ball game. So once we have a chance to get that tool, we'll get it to you as soon as we can. Either way, the Blue Crabs tonight are looking for their 84th win of the season and their 36th win in the second half. As the Blue Crabs again take on the Barnstormers here in the final game of the regular season. This is a historic Blue Crabs season, year where this team has won 83 games, set a Blue Crabs franchise record for the most wins in a season. Oh, we are. And now we have a chance to bring you that interview with David Harris. So you guys can all check that out and listen to what he had to say about the end of the season and the start of the postseason. Just outside the clubhouse in front of game three of this three game set in game 131 out of 131 of this Atlantic League regular season for the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs. Austin Rooney joined by David Harris. David, we're happy to have you on. Hey, how's it going, guys? All right, David, so let's talk about the end of this season here. It's a historic one for the Blue Crabs, so things might not be going all that great in the last 15 games or so, but still this team sets a Blue Crabs record, and it's something you can hang your hat on at the end of the year. You know, I, I just kind of like to say, the, I think when it comes to this group of guys, man, we've, we've done a great job through it all going when it comes to getting beat up, uh, guys getting injured, you know what I mean? So I, I think when it comes to us getting that franchise record, man, I think that's pretty neat due to the fact how we were in the first half. And the second half might have been a little bit slower, but knowing that even us having an opportunity to win, that, win the second half as well was, was meaning a lot. The fact of what we had going on as a team and guys just beat up, hurt, uh, guys changing the roster up a little bit and whatnot, just like most teams. But for the most part, I think we've done a pretty stellar job as a whole. You talk about this team as a whole, and there really haven't been that many roster changes from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Across the entire month of June, this team did not make a single roster change, and that's got to do a lot for the cohesiveness here in the clubhouse and the ability to stick together and be a tight knit group. Yeah, absolutely. I think when it, it came to that, especially during the beginning of this season through June, um, I mean, we were winning a lot of games, and guys were just getting along the chemistry and the the locker room was great, man. So, I mean, when I say we started having moves, moves was during because guys was getting hurt. Guys weren't able to do what they could and whatnot. We had to bring some guys in just to help us out for the most part. But when it comes to us and our, our chemistry as an or, or, uh, organization, uh, uh, man, it's, it's first class, man. Just, you know, Daryl Thompson does a great job to keep the energy. Matt Latos, he does his best of, you know, talking, talking his mess, but making sure guys are doing what they're supposed to do as veterans are supposed to do. So I think with them being leaders and helping us as a group of guys, I think that's what made the uh, clubhouse so special. For sure. Let's talk a little bit about this upcoming playoff series. Play the final regular season game today, and then... It's time for the playoffs. That starts on Tuesday. What are you looking for out of this group come playoff time on Tuesday? I'll tell you what, man. I, I want to say it's, it's, a, it's a brand new season. Uh, what we've done in the past, the past, the past, and it's over. Uh, we got Daryl Thompson on the mound, so, you know, there's always a good chance and a good opportunity for us to 
get a W, but I mean, I think if we just play small baseball, do the little things the correct way that we did towards the, uh, the beginning of the, of the year, and we bring that back a little bit more consistently, I think we have a good chance to start off with a good, with a good win, man. And then go from there, playoffs, baseball is baseball, and I truly believe that we have a good opp opportunity to win this whole thing. For sure, and that pitching staff, especially up top, you look at guys like Daryl Thompson, you look at guys like Mitch Lampson, and then the rotation as a whole has been really strong, and it's driven this team for a large portion of the year. Yeah, absolutely. I can't agree with you more, my man. I can't agree with you more. Well, let's jump into our next segment now. Let's go on to that trivia question. Um, so this is one we've sort of talked about throughout the course of the season. We talked about how the Blue Crabs had a chance at setting the all-time winning percentage record for a single season. Didn't quite get there. But the question is, over the course of a 140-game season, what's the most wins in Atlantic League history? Uh, my guess, I want to say 90, 90 wins. 90 wins, final answer? We're going we're gonna to reveal the answer on the broadcast. I'll tell you right once we're finished here with this pregame show, David. On to the next one. This is the Your Opinions uh, segment of our pregame show. And, David, the question today is one we've talked about a little bit in the past, and I'm going to let you know what some of your teammates have said for this one, but it is if you move an MLB team out of the United States and out of Canada, what country or city is that team headed to? I'm going to guess somewhere in Mexico and... Uh... I would like to say, I don't know if I'm allowed to give two answers, but sure, go ahead. Let's, let's hear it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say uh, Mexico City is one of them, okay. or uh, Guadalajara, and that's yep. the other one in Mexico as well. So those are my two guesses. All right. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure, but that's that's my guess. Have you played in a foreign country before? I have actually played in Mexico, and I've also played in Australia as well. So it, it is pretty pretty neat. I've also been into the Dominican Republic as well too. Does the Dominican Republic have a shot here, or they probably don't have quite as good of a shot at hosting an MLB franchise? Oh man, now you got you're getting my question. You're getting my <laughs> questions a little bit. Uh, you're getting my answer just a little bit. Uh, I'm questioning my answer. That I, <laughs> uh, Take your time. What? Man. Yes, no, maybe. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, I'm going to stick to my gut. I, it could be the Dominican Republic knowing that we do have a lot of teams, but I'm going to stick to my gut due to traveling. Right. right. So my, my opinion is going to stick with Mexico still as well. Gotcha. Just to give you an idea of what some of your teammates went with here, we had Michael Bolanski. He said, let's go to uh, Japan. Okay. Ryan Haug said he wants to expand baseball to England, okay. so he's putting a team in London. Uh, and Joe DeLuca was generally on the same train of thought with Mexico and the Dominican Republic. And that's fair. And that's fair. I just say those two, when it comes to the Dominican Republic and Mexico, it's just because they're a lot closer. Right, right. You know what I mean? Japan and the, and the other one, England's a little, little ways. So I, I don't know the, if the traveling would be that great for uh, MLB. <laughs> Last one here. A couple of your teammates are playing for Team Great Britain right now, Raul Shah and Alex Crosby. And a couple of former teammates as well with Kent Blackstone and Mackenzie Mills. They've won back-to-back -back games now. They are one win away from going to the World Baseball Classic. Have any words for some of your teammates? Hey, you guys keep doing it, man. Uh, we're really proud of you guys. You guys are repping us, like, highly, my man. It just shows what we're doing over here and with the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs. You guys keep balling out. And best of luck to you guys. Keep uh, doing the little things right. And you guys are going to get there, man. Best of luck to you guys. All right. Thanks, David. Really appreciate it. Oh, you bet, my man. Thank you so much. Oh, he had a chance to listen to David Harris. Where is he bringing the MLB team? He thinks the Mex Mexico and the Dominican Republic are the top spots. And I think he's probably right on that as far as travel is concerned. Let's bring you through the Blue Crabs lineup tonight and who they'll be facing on the mound. It's Jack Sundberg who leads things off. He's in center field tonight. Quite a few lineup changes. We'll get there in just a couple of moments, though. As Michael Wolanski bad second, Jared Walker in the three spot. That's where he's been most recently. The first change is that Joe DeLuca will be doing the catching. He bats fourth today. And Santiago Chirino into the five spot. He's at third base. Matt Hibbert bats sixth. He's in the left field tonight. While Ryan Haug bats seventh. He's the designated hitter. Out in right, it's Ian Yetzko who bats eighth. While Michael Baca closes out the order at shortstop who bats ninth. They'll face off against Dominic DiSabatino. But let's take a break here for the National Anthem at Clipper Magazine Stadium.
Uh, we are just about ready to go here for game three of the three game set. It's the final game of the regular season, and I couldn't be happier to have you with us on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. We've got a lot in store for you today for the final game of the regular season. Some final thank yous to give some of our terrific fans who followed us all year long. But we're not done yet. We've got at least a few more games in the playoffs. We'll be playing these same Lancaster Barnstormers and see if the Blue Crabs can get back on the right track before they start that three game or the best of five playoff set with the Lancaster Barnstormers. You went through the lineup moments ago, we'll run through it again for you. As Jack Sunberg leads things off, it's Michael Wolanski who bats second. The three hitter is Jared Walker batting fourth. It's Joe DeLuca. He's doing the catching tonight or this afternoon, I really should say. It's Santiago Chirino at third base. He bats fifth. Matt Hibbert bats sixth, he's in left field, while Ryan Haug bats seventh, and he is the designated hitter. Ian Yetzko is in the eighth spot, while Michael Baca bats nine. On the mound, it is Dominic DiSaventino. He has a six and five record. The ERA is high, though, at 6.65, entering play today. The Southern Maryland Blue Crabs at the end of the season are eight back from the Lancaster Barnstormers as the Barnstormers have a 43 and 21 record. The Blue Crabs at 35 and 29. And I think, I think that's probably to be expected based on the way a lot of this second half has gone. And it makes sense that that's where things finish out at. Um, of course, the Blue Crabs would have loved to have finish that second half a little better, but we heard it from David Harris. I mean, this is a team that's been, had its injuries, had to go and replace some of their, their talent from earlier in the year that you know, isn't available here at the end of the season. You look at guys like Braxton Lee, who's not available here for the end of the regular season, and the other bats like Alex Crosby, who is now over at Great Britain, and a lot the Blue Crabs had a face throughout the course of the second half and wasn't quite as smooth sailing as it was in the first half. Well, Jack Sunberg straps the, uh, the batting gloves. And he digs in from the left side, the righty, Dominic DiSabentino deals. First pitch, swing and a miss, and the count 0-1. Bring you around the diamond defensively for the Barnstormers. It's Joseph Carpenter in left. The center fielder is Ariel Sandoval, and Chris Proctor is in right field. Third baseman is Anderson Felice. The shortstop, Jake Hooper, and the second baseman is Trace Lair. The 0-1 pitch, he shows bunt. Did he go? Yes, he did, according to the third base umpire, Steve Zawiski. We'll get to your umpires in just a moment. Hoover is at shortstop. The second baseman is Trace Lair. Over at first base, it's Andretti Cordero. The catcher is Anthony Peroni. He is doing the catching for Dominic DiSabentino. Designated hitter today, that's Jacob Barfield, who was at first base the last two days. 0-2 pitch, that's away, and the count, one ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Top of the first inning for Jack Sunberg. And the pitch from DiSabentino, swing and a miss, strike three. And Jack Sunberg goes down on strike. Sunberg was 0 for 3 yesterday, 1 for 6 in this series. This is a Blue Crabs team that has mustered a total of six hits over the course of the last two games. That's not six hits in each of those games, six hits total. Four hits in game one, two hits in game two. The Blue Crabs scored two runs over the course of those two games. Lost 5-2 in game one, 9-0 in game two. And Michael Wolanski steps in. First pitch to Wolanski. Big wave and a miss in the count 0-1. And, and Sab D. Sabatino looks like he's on his game early here in the first inning. He had a 1-2-3 inning against the Blue Crabs in that 5-2 victory for the Barnstormers in game one. And the pitch. Check swing, did he go? Motion down to first base. Warren Nicholson doesn't have an answer for him, but I guess it's the home plate umpire, John Lamentino, who has decided he went around on the count 0-2. 
No balls, two strikes, one out. Again, your umpiring crew is John Lamantina behind the plate. It's Warren Nicholson at first and Steve Zawiski at third base. 0-2 pitch. Popped him up, foul territory, first base side, and the count remains 0-2. Oh Matt Hibbert gets in some action here in the tail end of the season, the final game. Ian Yetzko also getting an opportunity here in the final day of the year. 0-2 pitch low on the count, 1-2. and two. As Jared Walker is in today at first base while DeLuca is doing the catching. The idea here for the Blue Crabs, at least from an offensive standpoint, is give some guys a day off. And especially give them a day off in the field. 1-2 pitch, called strike three. Michael Wolanski can't believe it. He's not someone to argue. And he looks at John Lamantina saying, that's not close, way up. And well, he's called out on strikes at a pitch. It might have been a little up and in. Either way, it's called strike three, and there are two away. It's Jared Walker who will step in. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Dominic DiSabentino, not playing to his 6.68 ERA. And now the first pitch from the righty on the lefty, Jared Walker. That's low and in. Count one ball and no strikes. Fans, please let us know where you're watching from. If you haven't been commenting in the YouTube chat all year, please post the message in the YouTube chat. We'd love to give you a shout-out on the final regular season game of the year. A 105 start against the Lancaster Barnstormers. 1-0 pitch is up and away. Count 2-0. And, and it's one of the things I appreciate about everything here in Lancaster about the ability to have a 105 start time. You don't get that at a lot of places. You really don't. So it is nice when you get it. And the pitch called strike on the outside corner on the count. Two balls and one strike. Bert Hinman says stay healthy guys. Eyes on the prize. It all starts on Tuesday. Orioles fans said iconic both teams end the season with each other only to play the postseason go Blue Crabs. And Orioles fan says, why is the flag lowered? I'd imagine it's still in remembrance of September 11th this past week. 2-1 pitch is low and away in the count 3 and 1. Three balls, one strike, two outs. D. Sabatino deals. Up and away, ball four as Jared Walker draws a walk, and there's a runner on first base with two outs. A couple guys have extended on base streaks here they'll either finish the season with or will work with tonight. Jack Sundberg has an on base streak of nine games. He had that 34 game on base streak earlier in the year. And Zach Collier not in the lineup tonight, so unless he pinch hits, that will be the end of his season on a nine game on base streak. You can always extend it into the playoffs, but I feel like you wipe the slate clean. Everybody starts with, you know, batting average at zero. You know, it's everything restarts. You don't have any home runs. Could have hit 50 in the regular season. Pitch, swing and a miss, count 0-1. You start anew in the playoffs. Count no balls, one strike, two outs on Joe DeLuca. the 0-1 pitch, wave and a miss, count 0-2. Jared Walker on first base, choking around a little bit with Andretti Cordero, who's trying to hold him on at first. Count 0-2 on Joe DeLuca, the switch hitting catcher, who is actually doing the catching today. We've seen him a lot at first base recently. And D. Sabatino, the 0-2 pitch. That's up and away in the count 1-2. and two. For Joe DeLuca, the batting average this year at 265, uh, 261. And he's a guy that's had a lot of hard hit balls that just haven't gone his way this year. And that's baseball for you. You, know, you could have a batting average of 300 or 210 or anything really as the 1 2 pitch swung on and fouled off. Walker was on the move on the pitch. The count remains 1 and 2. Serving pretty food. 
One ball, two strikes on Joe DeLuca. Dominic DiSaventino has not allowed anybody to hit the ball in play so far. He has struck out two and walked one. Count one and two on DeLuca. D. Sabatino the pitch. Low on the dirt and the count two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. 84 mile an hour slider missed low and out of the zone. Under blue skies and warm weather. As we hit mid to late September. It's crazy how the time has flown by this year. 81 degrees in Lancaster this afternoon. Pitch, wave and a miss, strike three. As Joe DeLuca goes down, swinging to end the top of the first inning. A trio of strikeouts for Dominic DiSabatino. He mixed in a walk to Jared Walker along the way. The Blue Crabs strand one, they score none. At the end of the top of the first, it's the Blue Crabs nothing. And the Barnstormers coming to bat when we come back. This is Alex Crosby, and you're listening to the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. At Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, mortgages are what they do, not who they are. Fairway Mortgage Corporation is a proud partner of the American Warrior Initiative. A key part of this initiative is to educate, encourage, and inspire Americans to give back to our military. Visit their website at www.americanwarriorinitiative.com for more details. Our military fought to protect the American dream. Let's help them live it. It's Chris Proctor who will get things started against the Blue Crab starter. That's Alsis Herrera. Alsis Herrera enters this ball game with a one and four record, though the ERA much better at 2.28. Last time out though was a struggle for Herrera. Five innings of work. He allowed four earned runs, nine runs in total. Bring you through the lineup momentarily as Chris Proctor digs in, who it's 270. And first pitch swing, line drive, left center field, long run. It's Matt Hibbert who dives and makes the catch. Hibbert laid out to track that one down in left center. And he makes the catch for the first down. Matt Hibbert showing he can cover ground well out in the left field, and there is one away. Bottom of the first inning, one away from Clipper Magazine Stadium. We briefly mentioned that last start 
for Herrera against Long Island. With one out in the bottom of the first inning, no score. As Ariel Sandoval steps in. And the pitch called strike at the knees. The count 0-1. Five innings of work in that last start. 11 hits, nine runs, four earned. He allowed three home run balls to the Ducks, 0-1 called strike in the count 0 and 2. The reason he had only four earned as opposed to the nine runs was that there was an error by Alex Crosby on what would have been the second out. Blue Crabs actually could have turned two there. They got none as the 0-2 pitch is grounded foul first base side. And allowed runners to go on first and third with one out. A sacrifice fly for the next batter. to delivery to Ariel Sandoval. Pitch upstairs, count one ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes, one out. Paul uh, Herrera had struggled after pitching really, really well for the majority of the year. Without any prior, he had went six innings, four hits, one run, none earned. As the one-two pitch fouled off, first base side, his guy throws a lot of strikes ton of strikes. He only walked four batters across 27 and two-thirds innings. A really packed house here for a Sunday afternoon. You know, normally on a Sunday, no matter where you are, it's not quite as packed at the ballpark. One, two pitches low and in count, two and two, which I am a little surprised about. We'll get there in a moment. Let, let, let's stay right here on this, this most recent point. This place it's more or less packed for a Sunday afternoon ball game. I say I would think that there'd be more fans here on a Sunday, and I say that because you know, it's generally a family day. It's a family day in the ballpark, and it's a great way to spend an afternoon. Pitch, line drive, shallow left center field. It fouls one, bounces once in front of Matt Hibbert, and it's a base hit for Ariel Sandoval. Runner on first base with first one out. And Andretti Cordero will dig in as well. Cordero followed by Anderson Police. Let's run through the whole lineup from start to finish, though. Chris Proctor leads off. Ariel Sandoval bat second. Andretti Cordero in the three spot. He's at first base. Anderson Police is the cleanup hitter. He's at third base. Jacob Barfield, the DH, he bats fifth. Anthony Peroni is doing the catching. He bats sixth. Joseph Carpenter is in left. He's in the seventh spot. Pitch called strike on Cordero. Jake Hoover bats eighth. He is the shortstop. And Trace Lair bats ninth. He's at second base. Runner on first base, one out. Count 0-1 now on Cordero. Pitch. That's inside. Count 1-1. One, one. one ball, one strike. One out. Pitch, ground ball, third base side, and the count one and two. From first base is Ariel Sandoval at the plate. Andretti Cordero, arguably the most dangerous hitter in the Atlantic League, probably just behind Alejandro de Aza in that category. And the pitch, it's a little away, count two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and one away on Cordero. This is a Barnstormers lineup that despite not having Kelly Dugan, despite not having Colton Schaefer, is still one of the offensive forces in this league. Look at a guy like Kelly Dugan who led the league in home runs prior to his injury. Out for the year. Get Shawan Dunstan Jr. back just in time. Not playing here in game three, though. Imagine he'd be back in the lineup for game one of the playoffs. Pitch, swing a high fly ball. Center field rather deep. Sundberg drifts back. He's in front of the fast signs sign in the left center. He makes the catch, throw it to second base. And advancing from first to second, it's Ariel Sandoval, who tags on a deep fly out. And he's in scoring position with two outs. 
So a runner on second base with two away in the bottom of the first. Anderson Feliz, the second is power And Anderson Feliz will dig in from the right side. A packed house, all the suites are full here, as well as the concourse with fans all looking to get some food during today's ball game. Herrera, the offering to Feliz, up and away. One ball, no strikes, and two outs. Herrera, not going to overpower you with velocity as the 1 0 pitch is a little upstairs in the count, 2 0. Anderson Feliz. This is a team in Lancaster that hit five home runs yesterday, two of which came off the bat of Shawan Dunstan Jr. Only had five home runs the entire year. It was not the Blue Crabs night, either at the plate or on the mound. All Lancaster from start to finish. 2-0. Ground ball toward third. It's fielded by the Blue Crabs third baseman, Santiago Chirino, who fires across the diamond in time for the final out. And that ends the bottom of the first inning. Well, the Barnstormers had one base runner on one hit. They strand one. They score none at the end of the first inning. It's the Blue Crabs nothing. It's the Barnstormers nothing on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. We're going vanilla. Okay. Welcome you back in the top of the second inning. First pitch to Santiago Chirino is in there for a called strike. Chirino enters with a 375 batting average. No homers, one RBI, and a four-game hit streak. Pitch, big wave and a miss. The count 0-2. It'll be Chirino followed by Hibbert and Haug here in the top of the second. The 0-2 offering to Chirino. Popped it up foul behind home plate. The count remains 0-2 for Santiago Chirino. He is six, or I beg your pardon, he is he has six hits on the road trip. And is six for 16. Yet to strike out, and the 0-2 pitch came up and in and hits him. And so runner on first base with with nobody out. So he's now had 18 plate appearances. Chirino has. And he has not struck out once. And he has a strikeout rate that's below 10%, which is 
outstanding. And he really is what it means to be a contact first guy. A lot of singles, a lot of line drives. He's not going to rip the cover off the ball. He's not going to hit a ton of home runs. He's going to get a lot of contact. And he's going to get a lot of hits as a result. You put the ball in play and good things happen. And the pitch. Upstairs, count one and up. One ball, no strikes. With nobody out for Matt Hibbert, who hits 247 on the year. And the pitch, up and in, and the count, two balls and no strikes. Two balls, no strikes, no outs. 91 on the fastball from Di Sabatino. Sabatino has thrown as hard as 93, and the 2-0 pitch comes up and in. Count 3-0. Now, funny enough, we are now in our sixth batter of the game, and nobody's hit the ball in play for the Blue Crabs yet. Three strikeouts in the first, along with a walk to Jared Walker here in the second, a hit batsman. And the count 3-0 on Hibbert. Here is a 3-0 pitch. Called strike one in the count three and one on the righty. D. Sabatino's thrown 28 pitches, 16 of them for strikes, 12 for balls. That's not the rate you're really looking for. You want closer to a two to one strikes to balls, or at least 60-40, you know, sort of a representation, 3-2. to two. Three, one, The 3-1 three, pitch is a called strike. Now the count, 3-2. and two. But Di Sabatino throwing a lot of strikes as part of those strikeouts back in the first inning. Now has two strikes on the batter, Matt Hibbert. Contact has been hard to come by for the Blue Crabs today and throughout this series. 3-2 pitch, up and in, ball four. And Matt Hibbert reaches on a walk. Runners on first and second with nobody out. And here comes Ryan Howe. Can the Blue Crabs advance a base runner? Can they put the ball in play? And give Yetzko and Baca an opportunity to drive in a runner. Can Howe get the job done himself? Well, so far, Six Blue Crabs batters have come to the plate. And not a single one has put the ball in play. Three strikeouts, two walks, and a hit batsman so far in a scoreless ball game. Dominic D. Sabatino comes set. First pitch is inbound to Ryan Haug, a breaking ball for a called strike in the count 0 1. No balls, one strike, nobody out. In the top of the second inning, no score. Blue Crabs sent four batters to the plate in the first, had one walk. Lancaster sent four batters to the plate as well. They had one single. Runner stranded on second. That was Ariel Sandoval. Pitch, wave and a miss. In the count 0-2 to Ryan Howe. Yesterday was Eddie Butler, who went five innings of work, allowed seven runs on ten hits. And not all of them were very hard hit. I mean, he allowed five runs in the first on seven hits, and a few of them weren't the best hit balls you've seen all year, about 90 miles an hour exit velocity. They weren't ripping the cover off the ball. Two pitch. Line drive. Left field line. It's a base hit. It'll be there for extra bases. It's Chirino who goes around third. He'll score. Matt Hibber gets the stop sign at third base. An RBI double for Ryan Haug. And the Blue Crabs are on the board here in game three of this three-game set. They take a 1-0 lead. Oh, exactly what the doctor ordered for the Blue Crabs, a team that has really struggled to hit the ball. And they get an RBI double off the bat of Ryan Haug. Now you have an, an, an additional opportunity here. 
You lead this game 1-0. You have two on and nobody out. An opportunity to take a 3-0 lead by merely trading outs with runs, but you got to make contact. you got to stop striking out. And this group struck out 14 times yesterday. Had two hits. And the first pitch to Yetzko. Wave and a miss. Count on one. And it was really up and down the lineup. The Blue Crabs had strikeouts. Guys like David Harris. He struck out three times yesterday. was 0 for 4. Yetzko struck out twice. was 0 for 3. Baca struck out three times. He was 0 for 3. It was that kind of game. 0-1 pitch to Yetzko. Called strike on the outside corner. Count 0-2. It is Matt Hibbert from third. It's Ryan Haug from second with nobody out. one nothing Blue Crabs against the Lancaster Barnstormers. The Sabatino set. Let's go ready. Here is the 0-2 offering. Low and away. Count one ball and two strikes. Look at a guy like Let's go and the course of the season he has, and he's going to finish this year with a batting average somewhere between 255 and 265, I'd imagine. He comes in at 260 right now. In the final game of the year, and I, I think that you know, earlier in the year, he had a batting average north of 300. The power came in bunches. He had five home runs this year, 21 RBIs. A strong contact hitter, a guy who hits the ball really hard when he puts it in play, does strike out a fair bit, 1-2 pitch, low and away, count 2-2. Two and two. An OPS of 733 on the year, a 313 on base percentage, that number a little low, the 420 slugging percentage is pretty good though. De Sabatino ready, 2-2 two, two pitch. Called strike three. Yetzko not a fan of the call, but he goes down looking as John Lamentina punches out Ian Yesko, and there's one away. When we talk about advancing runners. We talk about what's the Blue Crabs, what are they hitting with runners in scoring position. Numbers haven't been good recently, not at all. Today, the Blue Crabs... One for two with runners in scoring position. Had runners on first and second with no outs. How hits the RBI double, but Yetzko now strikes out. Two more opportunities with runners in scoring position. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Count 0-1. This Lancaster ballpark, a really nice area of town. It really is a, a great spot. We talked a little bit about it yesterday, but a lot of nice restaurants right around here. The downtown area in general, a great spot in Lancaster. Pitch called strike, count 0 2. It is a nice and a thriving city here around the ballpark. Great spot for a ball club. The Sabatino, the 0-2. Called strike three on Michael Baca, who's not happy and has a couple of words for John Lamentina. Yesterday, Baca 0 for three with three strikeouts. He sort of keeps that up today, 0 for his last four with four strikeouts. Here comes Jack Sunberg. Sunberg 0 for 1. He, he did not have a hit yesterday. He does have a nine game on base streak at that, though. Not quite the 34 game streak he had last year. We'll have to see what Sunberg ends the regular season with. Can he extend it to 10 games? Can he drive in a couple of runs here in the top of the second? Pitch upstairs, count one ball and no strikes. Still Hibbert from third and Haug from second. one nothing Blue Crabs. The RBI double from Ryan Haug is the difference right now. Don't have to worry about the shadows today on a Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. start time. Pitch 
It's a little away, count two and oh. Also a large local Amish population here in Lancaster. That's probably what the county is best known for, Lancaster County. We'll frequently see some Amish folks at the ballpark. And the 2-0 pitch called strike on the inside corner and Jack Sunberg puts his hand up saying, come on, it's not a strike. But John Lamantina disagrees, he called it strike one. Count two balls and one strike. Well, Dominic DiSaventino has thrown 44 pitches through an inning and two thirds. He has struck out five, all five batters. 2-1 pitch, hard line drive toward right, but it is right at the right fielder, Proctor, who makes the catch for the final out. Well, Jack Sundberg hit that ball right on the nose, but he lines out to right to end the inning. The Blue Crabs strand two in scoring position. They score one at the end of an inning and a half. It's the Blue Crabs one, and the Barnstormers nothing on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. the early afternoon ball game today as the Blue Crabs have a 1-0 lead as we go to the bottom of the second inning. It's Jacob Barfield, the righty, who steps in against Alsis Herrera. Barfield bats fifth today for the Barnstormers. Get to a couple more comments in that YouTube chat as the pitch is fouled back in the count 0-1. Susan H. says, hi from Northern Virginia. Go Blue Crabs. I'll be cheering in Lancaster on Tuesday. Well, Susan, You'll have to come and introduce yourself. I'd love to meet everybody who's here on the YouTube chat. Come over to the broadcast booth. I'd love to talk to all y'all. Pitch, ground ball, third base side, foul to count 0-2. It's been great to communicate with a lot of the Blue Crabs fans uh, over the YouTube chat here and get you all involved in the broadcast. I was able to meet Donnie Geeky earlier in the year. We have Multi Apples who says good game and Luis Montgomery says good luck guys. Alsis Herrera gets a sign from Joe DeLuca. Here is the 0-2. Up and in and the count one and two now on uh, Jacob Barfield. Barfield, the 263 hitter on the year, four home runs, 23 RBIs. 
and Herrera, the one two. That's low on the er, count two and two. Excuse me, count two balls and two strikes with nobody out in the bottom of the first inning. One nothing Blue Crabs. An RBI double from Ryan Haug, the difference. The more important note, though, is the Blue Crabs were unable to drive in either the runner on second or third with nobody out. So the runner's on first and second. It was a hit by pitch as Torino was hit. And then a walk as Matt Hibbert walked. The RBI double from Haug. The runner's on second and third. Pitch fouled off third base side. Toward the Blue Crabs dugout. The count two balls and two strikes. But back to that last point. The, the Blue Crabs then had runners on second and third. Nobody out. Yetzko struck out. Baca struck out. And Jack Sundberg hit the ball right on the nose. A hard line out to right. Pitch. That's low. Count three and two. The Blue Crabs are still going to be one for four with runners in scoring position. But that's not going to cut it as is. This is a team that needs to find more success come playoff time in those critical spots. 3-2 pitches low, it's ball four. It's only the fifth walk all year for Alsis Herrera across 28 and two-thirds innings. I think Bert, him and here are cameraman back in uh, Southern Maryland, their photographer. I apologize. Cameraman at the... Uh, he, he is the team photographer. I think you deserve a better title there than uh, the one I, I previously gave you there. So sorry about that, Bert. But I think he's got the right idea here. Eyes in the prize. It all starts on Tuesday. The pitch is low. I, I think you sort of have to forget about what's happened here over the past 15 games. This team is 6-9 and nine in the last 15 games. And it, it's not where it's been the rest of the year. 1-0 uh, pitch. Low in the count, 2 0 on Anthony Peroni, the catcher for the Barnstormers, who bats from the right side. Runner on first base and nobody out. It's a situation where you really got to turn the page. You can't dwell on what's happened for the last 15 games. You got to reset. You have a day off. Some of these position players are having two days off, the off day today. 2 0 pitch. Line drive through the right side, a base hit for Anthony Peroni. It's Jacob Barfield who holds up at second. Runners on first and second now with nobody out for the Barnstormers. So again, I, I think it gives you the idea of reset. Let's try to get back to where we were in the first half, whether it's a mentality thing or whether it's actually just hitting the ball better and, and getting more consistent pitching. I think it's all of those things. The Blue Crabs have a couple of distinct advantages over the Barnstormers. The top of the pitching staff with guys like Thompson and Lampson who've been outstanding. I think that's advantage Blue Crabs. And bullpen, especially seven, eight, and nine, major advantage Blue Crabs. The bats, got to go advantage uh, Barnstormers now. Pitch line drive, well struck toward right. That ball is going to one hop the wall. Yetzko plays it out in right, he fires to the first baseman, Walker, and a run's going to come in and score. An RBI double to right field as it's Jacob Barfield who comes home and scores. Joseph Carpenter with the RBI double to right. And let's go through in past the cutoff man, Wolanski, to Jared Walker, who ended up stopping the ball. And the runner's on second and third. With nobody out. Seems awfully reminiscent of the top of the second. And the question is, can the Barnstormers hit with runners in scoring position? Because the Blue Crabs could not. And the Blue Crabs infield is back there, willing to surrender a run. As Jake Hoover comes to the plate. Runners on second and third with nobody out. The Blue Crabs clearly don't want to allow a ball to get through in the infield. That scores two if they can stop it. And the pitch. Ground ball, third base side foul. The count 0 1. No balls, one strike. Nobody out. 1 1 ball game now as the Barnstormers have responded awfully quickly here in the bottom of the second inning. A Sunday afternoon. We hope everybody is enjoying 
this weekend. Fortunately, the Blue Crabs are having a bit of a tough go here. 0-1 pitch is away in the count one and one. Southern Maryland has not been swept all year long. And at major risk of getting swept today. Donnie Geeky says, let's go Blue Crabs. Can't leave Ducks on the pond. Going to have to drive in runs to go deep in the playoffs. Exactly right, Donnie. You hit the nail on the head. 1-1. One, one. Line drive to right. Yet's go back. He's in the warning track and he's gonna, it's gonna go off the wall. One run will score from third. That's Jacob, I beg your pardon, that's Anthony Peroni. Meanwhile, it's a double for Jake Hoover. Only one run scores. It was Joseph Carpenter who held up at second base, expecting that ball to be caught. Ian Yesko's not a right fielder. Uh, he hasn't actually played right field before. And that's probably a catchable ball for someone who plays a lot of right. And instead it goes off the wall, off that Penn State health sign. He went back on it, it hit the wall, and then it went by him as it sort of ricocheted off that wall. And so it's second and third, and nobody out with a runner on second base now. And these are balls that I think most right fielders make that catch. But I also think that if that wall isn't there and Yetzko's playing at his normal distance, it's not going to... You're going to play that ball differently if the wall is not there. And the pitch is low on the count. One ball and no strikes. It was a hard line drive, but it was virtually right at him or just a little bit over his head. It's tough playing in right field when you've never played there before. Right? So it's hard to fault him. Runners on second and third. Hoover on second, Carpenter on third, breaking ball, a little inside in the count 2-0. Oh. Well, Herrera has struggled here in the second inning, two runs on three hits. And Herrera comes set. Here is the 2-0 pitch. Swing and a miss, count 2-1. Two balls, one strike, nobody out. Now Blue Crabs are going to need to do a major turn of the page for Tuesday. You can take a couple of lessons from this series, but you really just got to reset. 2-1 pitch, fouled off first base side in the count 2-2. Two two. You got to hit with runners in scoring position. They have not done that recently at all. Yeah, you got to get hits in general, and they haven't done that either. Six hits over the course of two games is just not going to cut it. And sort of Donnie Geeky's point that you can't leave, you got to drive in runs, you can't leave ducks in the pond. Pitch, ground ball, first base side. You got to get ducks on the pond before you can drive them in. And the Blue Crabs weren't really getting those. Getting walks, they had a few hit batsmen, but the hits are at a premium right now for Southern Maryland. Runners on second and third with nobody out. I think this is the same team that had nine consecutive hits against the Long Island Ducks on Wednesday night. 2-2 two -two pitch. Popped up foul, third base side, and the count remains two balls and two strikes. 2-1 two Lancaster after the RBI double from Jake Hoover. It's Trace Lair at the plate right now. There at the plate, Carpenter from third, Hoover from second base. As Trey Slayer digs back in, takes a couple of practice swings. Alcis Herrera is set. Here's the 2 2. Foul off, third base side once again. And the count remains two balls and two strikes. I, I am interested to see what Stan Clyburn decides to go with for the bullpen. Should Herrera be able to go five plus innings of work today? What does that bullpen look like? It's, a, it's an interesting question because you certainly don't want to overtax anyone to the extent that they're going to be tired on Tuesday. 2-2 two -two pitch. 
Ground ball to second. It's fielded by Baca. He looks to the plate. Doesn't have a throw at the plate, but he fires to first. One run comes in. It is a ground out and a fielder's choice for Baca to go to first base and get the lead get the out there as the lead runner. That's Joseph Carpenter scores from third. Jake Hoover remains at second base. So one away, but still a runner in scoring position for the Barnstormers. And a tough go of things for Herrera here in the second inning. Allowed three runs on three hits. And the first pitch now to Chris Proctor. The leadoff hitter is in there for a called strike. Southern Maryland is going to have their work cut out for them as they try to battle back in this ball game. And the first pitch is away. Count one ball and no strikes. Runner on second. That's Hoover. Proctor at the plate, three to one. Lancaster over Southern Maryland, pitch called strike and the count one and one. Playoffs start on Tuesday, games two and three, well games one and two I should say. We'll be right here at Clipper Magazine Stadium on Tuesday and Wednesday, off day on Thursday, and then back in Southern Maryland for Friday and the games if necessary on Saturday and Sunday. And the pitch, up and away. Count two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Two balls, two strikes, one out on Chris Proctor. Herrera comes set, the 2-2. Check swing, did he go? Yes, he did. It's strike three. Home plate umpire, John Lamantina, decides he's going to make that call and not motion down to third to ask for help from Steve Zawiski. And there are now two away after the strikeout from Herrera. It is his first strikeout of the day. It's been a bit of a rough go for Herrera so far. 43 pitches through an inning and two-third. And all these runs are going to go down as earned, but with that said, I think if Blue Crabs have Braxton Lee out and right, might have a bit of a different situation going on right here. Just to give you an idea on some of the hard hit line drives, Jake Coopers was only hit at 93 miles an hour off the wall in right. And the pitch called strike, or called a ball, I beg your pardon. It's a miss, just a little low maybe inside. Count one and up. It's a breaking ball from Herrera to get the count going against Ariel Sandoval, who's hitting 364 on the year. Sandoval had a single back in the first. The 1-0 is upstairs, count 2-0. Two, oh. two balls, no strikes, two outs. Jake Hoover on second base. And Reddy Cordero's on deck with Ariel Sandoval at the plate. The Michael Bolanski will start the offense for the Blue Crabs when they come back to the plate. 2 0 pitch called strike. Just picks up the upstairs and outside corner of the strike zone. Herrera gets a sign from DeLuca. Looks back the runner at second, Hoover. Here is the 2-1. Ground ball, nicely scooped at third by Chirino. He fires to first in time to get Ariel Sandoval. That is a terrific play by the third baseman, Santiago Chirino, who fielded that ball and fired to first in time. 
for the out. Well, that ends the top, the bottom of the second inning, I should say, but not before the Barnstormers score three runs on three hits at the end of two innings of play. It's the Barnstormers three, the Blue Crabs one on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. This is Nick Wells, and you're listening to the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. Come stay at the Holiday Inn Express Waldorf, where teamwork makes the dream work. A proud sponsor of the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs and your home away from home. The Holiday Inn Express is located at 11,370 Days Court. That's 11370 Days Court Waldorf, near the Waldorf Shoppers World Shopping Center. Call 301-932-9200 to make a reservation or look us up at IHG.com or on the IHG app. Come put your feet up and enjoy the complimentary free breakfast and indoor heated pool at the Holiday Inn Express, Waldorf. Wolanski leads things off and takes the first pitch strike from Dominic D. Savantino in the top of the third inning. Blue Crabs one, Lancaster three on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. 0 1. Swing and a miss, count 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes, no outs. It'll be Wolanski followed by Jared Walker and Joe DeLuca. Southern Maryland trails by two in the top of the third. Pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Uh, three pitches, three strikes, and a strikeout to Wolanski. And Dominic D. Savantino struck out six batters in the first seven. A terrific performance by the righty so far as Jared Walker will dig in from the left side. Walker taps home plate a couple of times. And the first pitch, up and away, count 1-0. Oh. Okay. One ball, no strikes, one out. The 1-0 oh to Walker. He's inbound from De Sabatino. Wave and a miss, count one ball and one strike now on the lefty. Well, fans, we talked about this in our pregame show. We're going to play the pregame show in between innings here. And it's a shorter one today than it's been in the past. We had about six minutes or so with uh, David Harris, the Blue Crabs designated hitter. Might have had a chance to hear some of that prior to today's ball game. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss, count one and two. Our trivia question today was one we've gone over quite a bit in the past. We've never asked it, though. Uh, as we've referenced this on many occasions on the Blue Crabs broadcast. So if you've been listening throughout the season, you might know the answer to this one. And we'll say it right now. We'll post in the YouTube chat in the fourth. As the one-two offering to Walker. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two away as Walker goes down swinging in the top of the third inning. Question today. What's the most wins in a 140-game season? in Atlantic League history. Most wins in a 140 game season in Atlantic League history, or most wins in general. Blue Crabs finish with 
either 83 or 84 across 131 games this year. And the first pitch to DeLuca. Wave and a miss at a breaking ball low and out of the zone. Count 0-1-1. We talk about hits. We talked a lot about hits. The Blue Crabs have one hit across two and two-thirds. You expand that out throughout the course of the ball game, you're looking at three to four hits. It's about driving in runs, about moving over runners. And the strikeout numbers are astronomical. Pitch, ground ball, up the middle for a base hit, just past the outstretch reach of the second baseman, Trace Lair, who dove for it and nearly knocked it down. But that one gets into right center for a base hit, and there's a runner on first with two outs. So Joe DeLuca picks up a single here in the top of the third. It's Santiago Chirino who digs in. Chirino, then Hibbert, then Haug. Chirino was hit by a pitch back in the first inning. Or the second inning, I should say. Came around to score the lone run for the Blue Crabs. Pitch, line drive, foul, first base side. Count 0-1-1. D. Sabatino throwing right around 93 in this ball game. Give you some of the numbers for your pitchers. D. Sabatino's topped out at 93.4. Alcis Herrera has topped out at 86 and a half. About seven miles an hour faster for D. Sabatino over. Herrera, pitch, that's away, and the count one ball and one strike. The hardest hit ball today, it's not one of those doubles off the wall and right, it was not a hard base hit up the middle or something like that, it was the ground out that was very well played over at third base by Santiago Chirino. Who fielded and fired to first. 1-1 pitch will have to wait as Di Sabatino lobs the ball over to first base as DeLuca dove back in with more than enough time. One one offering pitch. Foul back in the count one and two. One ball, two strikes, two outs. In the top of the third inning. Don't need the lights for an afternoon contest between these two squads. And the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. One of the rare strikeouts for Santiago Chirino. He's had 19 plate appearances with the Blue Crabs. That's the first time he's gone down by the way of the K. Well, that ends the bottom, or the top of the third inning, I should say. Blue Crabs picked up one hit, they strand one, they score none at the end of two and a half. It's the Blue Crabs one and the Barnstormers three on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. We are just outside the clubhouse in front of game three of this three game set and game 131 out of 131 of this Atlantic League regular season for the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs. Austin Rooney joined by David Harris. David, we're happy to have you on. Hey, how's it going, guys? How's it going? All right, David. So let's talk about the end of this season here. It's a historic one for the Blue Crabs. Now, things might not be going all that great in the last 15 games or so, but still this team sets a Blue Crabs record and it's something you can hang your hat on at the end of the year. You know, I, I just kind of like to say, you, I think when it comes to this group of guys, man, we've, we've done a great job through it all going, when it comes to getting beat up, uh, guys getting injured, you know what I mean? So I, I think when it comes to us getting that franchise record, man, I think that's pretty neat due to the fact how we were in the first half and Second half might have been a little bit slower, but knowing that even us having an opportunity to win that, win the second half as well was was meaning a lot through the fact of what we had going on as a team and guys just beat up, hurt, uh, guys changing the roster up a little bit and whatnot, just like most teams. But for the most part, I think we've done a, a pretty stellar job as a whole. 
you talk about this team as a whole, and there really haven't been that many roster changes from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. I think across the entire month of June, this team did not make a single roster change, and that's got to do a lot for the cohesiveness here in the clubhouse and the ability to stick together and be a tight-knit group. Yeah, absolutely. I think when it, it came to that, especially during the beginning of this season and through June, um, I mean, we were winning a lot of games, and guys were just getting along. The chemistry and the, the locker room was great, man. So, I mean, when I say we started having moves, moves was during because guys were getting hurt. Guys weren't able to do what they could and whatnot, and we had to bring some guys. I get some great insight there from David Harris about – this team and how close knit of a group this group is and what they were able to accomplish just by injuries there in our pregame show which we're also going to be playing between innings across the third and the fourth pitch foul ball third base side count 0 and 1 no balls one strike no outs Herrera comes set here's the 0-1 pitch uh, called strike and we count one ball no balls and two strikes Herrera a guy that typically is going to throw a lot of strikes that's his it's what he goes into ball games looking to do he's not a guy who's going to walk a whole lot of batters has walked just five batters over 27 innings as the 0-2 pitch a little bit low and the count one and two So far in today's game, 30 strikes, 20 balls. Not a bad ratio from strikes. The ball is pitched to Cordero, swinging a high fly ball. Deep left field, this one back to the warning track at the wall. It is way out of here. Over the high mark side in left field onto the hill. It's a solo shot from Andretti Cordero, who gives the Barnstormers a 4-1 lead. Cordero has been red hot at the plate. He has hit a home run in each of the three games in this series. Well, the Blue Crabs pitching staff going to have to figure out a way to keep him in check during the playoffs, but Southern Maryland now trails 4-1 to one in game three of this three-game set. And not just that, but this is the final game of the regular season. The Blue Crabs haven't been swept yet, and they're at a major risk now of getting swept, trailing in this ball game 4-1 to one, with the bats being very quiet recently really got to find a way. Can you string together some hits? Can you get the long ball to get going? Pitch, called strike. I think everybody in that clubhouse knows what the problem is. It's just hard to correct course. 0-1 pitch. It's fouled off third base side when you look up and down that Blue Crabs lineup and almost everybody from top to bottom has been struggling with the plate. You can go in there and point out a couple guys who may have been hitting better at certain points. And Walker had a good series last time as the 0-1 pitch, or the 0-2 pitch actually low and in count one and two now. So again, you got, you got guys like um, Jared Walker had a great series. Michael Wolanski hits the ball very hard, very often, despite the fact he's been getting out recently. 1-2 pitch, fouled off, count remains one and two. Uh, DeLuca had a decent stretch at one point, and Santiago Chirinos hit the ball pretty well since rejoining this team. But again, this is a Blue Crabs roster that's without Braxton Lee right now. And where a lot of the other bats just haven't quite been where they've been at other points this season. When you combine for six hits over two games, it's not great. One, two pitches low and in count, two and two. This is a Barnstormers team that's averages, averaged north of six runs per game in the second half. The Blue Crabs have combined for six hits over two games. 2-2, two -two, check swing, did he go? No, he did not, according to the first base umpire, John Lamantina. As Anderson Felice holds up, count three and two. It'll be Felice followed by Barfield and Peroni here in the bottom of the third inning. One run already in for Lancaster as they have a 4-1 lead off the solo shot from, And from Andretti Cordero. And the pitch. Ground ball. Two hopper over to second. Really nice backhanded play by Wolanski. The flip to first in time. There's one away. Terrific play by Michael Wolanski making the play up the middle. 
a comment from Merrily Grace who says, when staff decides to place players in areas they don't play, it is another player. Hoping the thought press is to give these guys a break and that these three games aren't all that important. I think that's exactly right. Uh, you know, we talk about out in right field, Yetzko, uh, you're not making a, a great play on a couple of line drives off the wall. And again, he's somebody who has never played right field. I asked him before today's game, have you ever played right? He said, no. It's a new experience for him. And the pitch, ground ball over to third, a routine play for Santiago Chirino, who flips across the diamond for the second out. So two away in the bottom of the first inning. So a runner on first base with two outs. Blue Crabs still finalizing that starting rotation, what that might look like for the playoffs. The first pitch is low, count one ball and no strikes. I'd have to imagine, we talked about this at some length, you're going to go Thompson, Lampson, and, and then it, it, you, you probably look at Merrithew as a guy who might fit that role pretty darn well. As the 1-0 pitch is upstairs, count 2-0. And, and he's had a little bit of an up and down more recently, but he's been one of the most consistent pitchers overall throughout the course of the season for this Blue Crabs team. And the 2-0 pitch up and away. If there's anybody who's earned it, it's certainly him. Eddie Butler has been in that mix as well, but you know he's a guy that throws really hard and might really serve this, this ball club well in a bullpen role. And just seeing him throw 96, 97, maybe touch 98 on the fastball. 3-0 pitch. That's a little away. It's ball four. And there's a runner on first base with two outs. two-out walk issued by Alcis Herrera, who has gone two and two-thirds innings. He has allowed five hits, four runs, and two walks. Herrera has thrown 63 pitches. This is a ball game where you probably want to save the bullpen as much as you want for that postseason. You can give them an inning. You probably don't want to give them more than that. Make sure that they're pitched somewhat recently, and I think that's probably why he wanted to get him in yesterday, right? Have him pitch on Saturday, so they still have pitched recently, and then give him the day off on Sunday. Issue being, though, that a pitch fouled off back behind home plate, count one and one. The issue being that if you play him here on Sunday, it is pretty darn close. You have one day off, and then you get that ball game on Tuesday. One ball, one strike. Runner on first base and two outs. Uh, Joseph Carpenter to the righty. Herrera the pitch. Ground ball to third. Chirino's got it. Really nicely fielded at the belt, and he fires the second for the lead out and the force out and the final out in the bottom of the third inning. The Barnstormer score one. It was a solo shot off the bat of Andretti Cordero. They strand one at the end of four innings of play. It's the Blue Crabs who trail the Barnstormers 4-1 on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. As in just to help us out for the most part, but when it comes to us and our, our chemistry as an or, or, uh, organization, I, uh, man, it's it's first class, man. Just you know, Daryl Thompson does a great job to keep the energy. Matt Latos, he does his best of you know talking talking his mess, but making sure guys are doing what they're supposed to do as veterans are supposed to do. So I think with them being leaders and helping us as a group of guys, I think that's what made the uh, clubhouse so special. For sure. Let's talk a little bit about this upcoming playoff series. Play the final regular season game today, and then it's time for the playoffs. That starts on Tuesday. What are you looking for out of this group come playoff time on Tuesday? Well, I'll tell you what, man. I, I want to say it's it's a, it's a brand new season. Uh, what we've done in the past, the past, the past, and it's over. Uh, 
We got Daryl Thompson on the mound, so, you know, there's always a good chance and a good opportunity for us to get a W. But, I mean, I think if we just play small baseball, do the little things the correct way that we did towards the, uh, the beginning of the, of the year, and we bring that back a little bit more consistently, I think we have a good chance to start off with a good, with a good win, man. And then go from there. Playoffs, baseball is baseball. And I truly believe that we have a good opp opportunity to win this whole thing. For sure. And that pitching staff, especially up top, you look at guys like Daryl Thompson, you look at guys like Mitch Lamson, and then the rotation as a whole has been really strong, and it's driven this team for a large portion of the year. Yeah, absolutely. I can't agree with you more, my man. I can't agree with you more. Well, let's jump into our next segment now. Let's go on to that trivia question. Um, so this is one we've sort of talked about throughout the course of the season. We talked about how the Blue Crabs had a chance at setting the all-time winning percentage record for a single season. Didn't quite get there. But the question is, over the course of a 140-game season, what's the most wins in Atlantic League history? Well, you just heard the trivia question in between innings there moments ago. The first pitch now for Matt Hibbert, a chopper over to third. It's fielded by the third baseman, Anderson Felice, who fires the first in time, and there is one away. One out in the top of the fourth inning as the Blue Crabs trail the Barnstormers 4-1. to one. And they will send Ryan Howe to the plate. He has an RBI double already on the day. And it's 4-1 Barnstormers. So if you didn't catch it, today's trivia question, what's the most wins in a 140-game Atlantic League season? pitch swinging a high fly ball right field off the bat of Howe swung back to the warning track at the wall it's gonna bounce off the base of the wall Chris Proctor did not read it very well throw comes into second base oh it's in time to get Howe oh Howe it looked like he got that hand in there first he might have come off the bag and he can't believe that he's thrown out either way there are two away in the top of the four things the Blue Crabs do pick up their third hit of the ball game Comes off the bat of Ryan Haug as the right fielder Chris Proctor did not read that ball very well. And that wall is so shallow in right center. It's probably about 310 feet. And so there are now two away in the top of the fourth. First pitch to Ian Yesko is inside. And now the 1 0. Swing a high fly ball, right field foul. The count one ball and one strike now on Ian Yesko. Top of the fourth inning on a sunny afternoon at Clipper Magazine Stadium. One one. Going away. Count two and one. Two balls, one strike, two outs on Yetz. Go pitch. Going to actually release the question in between innings on YouTube. But the question is. What's the most wins in a single season in the Atlantic League, a 140 game schedule? Who won those games? And what year was it? So what team holds the record for the most wins in Atlantic League history? How many wins was it? And what year was it? 2-2 two -two pitch, ground line drive, foul back behind home plate. Count remains two and two. So if you have an idea, go ahead and post in the YouTube chat, and we'll actually release the question so you can read it and look it over and give your thoughts in between innings. 2-2 two -two pitch to Yetzko. Swing and a miss, strike three. Yetzko goes down, swinging at a breaking ball, a really nice pitch, low and out of the zone from Dominic Di Sabatino. For Di Sabatino, it's strikeout number nine across just four innings for the writer who's for the righty who's been very dominant up until this point. 4-1 Lancaster. We go to the bottom of the fourth of the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. Well, 
We are just outside the clubhouse in front of game three of this three game set and game 131 out of 131 of this Atlantic League regular season for the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs. Austin Rooney joined by David Harris. David, we're happy to have you on. Hey, how's it going, guys? All right, David, so let's talk about the end of this season here. It's a historic one for the Blue Crabs. You know, things might not be going all that great in the last 15 games or so, but still this team sets a Blue Crabs record, and it's something you can hang your hat on at the end of the year. You know, I, I just kind of like to say, I think when it comes to this group of guys, man, we've, we've done a great job through it all going when it comes to getting beat up, uh, guys getting injured, you know what I mean? So I, I think when it comes to us getting that franchise record, man, I think that's pretty neat due to the fact how we were in the first half and second half might have been a little bit slower but knowing that even us having an opportunity to win that win the second half as well was was meaning a lot through the fact of what we had going on as a team and guys just beat up hurt uh guys changing the roster up a little bit and whatnot just like most teams but for the most part i think we've done a, a pretty stellar job as a whole you talk about this team as a whole, and there really haven't been that many roster changes from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. I think across the entire month of June, this team did not make a single roster change, and that's got to do a lot for the cohesiveness here in the clubhouse and the ability to stick together and be a tight-knit group. Yeah, absolutely. I think when it, it came to that, especially during the beginning of this season and through June, um, I mean, we were winning a lot of games, and guys were just getting along the chemistry and the the locker room was great, man. So, I mean, when I say we started having moves, moves was during because guys were getting hurt. Guys weren't able to do what they could and whatnot, and we had to bring some guys in. And the first pitch from Jay Hoover is fouled off third base. I was sorry, we played some of that interview back from the start. Um, as we'll resume the interview back in the uh, middle portion of the interview, back when we uh, hit our next... Uh, in between inning break, make sure you guys can hear the entire interview with uh, David Harris before today's ball game. 0 1, ground ball foul, third base side. Count 0 2 on Hoover. Now we have a terrific answer in our YouTube chat from our away clubhouse manager, Wes Mumford. Count 0 2 now on Jake Hoover with the base paths empty. 4 1 Lancaster pitch. Breaking ball a little away. Count one and two now. Wes Mumper says the answer is 141 games. It will be in the 2023 season for the Blue Crabs. You got to love that answer. One, two. Ground ball foul, third base side. The count one and two, it remains. Let's see if we have any other answers. As to which team has the most wins in a single season in Atlantic League history. How many wins was it? And what year was it? And the one-two pitch. Foul back. Count remains one and two. One ball. Two strikes. Nobody out. Give you a little bit of an update on velocity from the two pitchers. Herrera has topped out at 86.5 and DiSabatino at 93.4. One two pitch. Ground ball over toward the first base side. It's gonna be a tough play for everybody. And it's gonna be a it's gonna be a base hit in an infield. Meanwhile, Volansky tried a behind the back throw to get it to Walker in time. There was no shot. And it actually got past Walker at first base, had to go scramble after it. And here comes Trace Lair. Well, Trace Lair will come to the plate. He'll bat from the left side. With the runner on first base, and nobody out. Be Trey Slayer followed by Chris Proctor and Ariel Sandoval. 9 1 and 2 due up after the leadoff runner, Jay Cooper, got on. The pitch, that's low. The count one ball and no strikes.
terrific Sunday afternoon for baseball. It really doesn't get much better than this weather-wise in September. You can't ask for anything better at 80 degrees. It's not crazy humid outside. It's just a great day. Pitch is low in the count. Two balls and no strikes. Man, it feels like a summer summer day for baseball. Give you a bit of an update on what the weather looks like for that first series. We'll get there in just one moment. 2-0 pitch. Called strike. Count two balls and one strike. So here in Lancaster for Tuesday and Wednesday, does not say anything about rain. It says temperatures... The high will be 82 on Tuesday and 86 on Wednesday. Count two and one now on Lair. It did say a chance of thunderstorms initially on Tuesday. That's no longer there, though, on the Weather Channel app. And the pitch line drive up the middle for a base hit. Runners go station to station. So runners on first and second with nobody out. comes Chris Proctor, the right fielder, as they've got the kids on the mic after the base hit from Trey Slayer up the middle. So Hoover from first to second with nobody out in the bottom of the fourth inning. 4-1 Lancaster, three in the second, a solo home run from Andretti Cordero in the third, and now two on and nobody out here in the fourth. the pitch a little bit away in the count one and oh now we don't normally get all that much into pitch counts this early in the ball game usually because well, blue crabs pitchers go pretty deep but uh stan cliver the blue crabs manager does not like to take out players before the dh can come out of the or to, to that would force the dh to come out of the game and a 1-0 pitch from herrera swing a high fly ball left center field it's hibber who gives way to sunberg who makes the catch it's Hoover who fakes going and now returns to the bag as Trace Lair stands on first, Hoover on second with one away. Now the hope here for Herrera has to be you go five. He's thrown 77 pitches though through three and a third. There is no action in the Blue Crabs bullpen. And again, we've talked about this at length, but you don't want those bullpen arms to be too tired if you go to everybody in the bullpen. I, I mean, for that game on Tuesday, I mean, I guess everybody would be available, but you want everybody available for both Tuesday and Wednesday. And if you pitch this Sunday, off day Monday, and then you pitch Wednesday and or Tuesday and Wednesday, it's three games in four days. It's a lot. A lot of stress you're putting on the arm at that point. I'm sure, you get the off day on Thursday, but you need a, some more pitchers again on. Friday and put yourself in a bit of a hole. Pitch fouled back and the count 0 and 1. So you want your arms to be available for that little playoff series. Oh and one on Sandoval. Runners on first and second with one out. From second, it's Hoover. From first, it's Lair. Sandoval at the plate. Here's the 0-1. Low in the count. One ball and one strike. One away now in the bottom of the fourth inning. Southern Maryland scored their lone run in the top of the second. They started the scoring, but it was Lancaster with three in the second and one in the third. And Herrera. Come set, pitch, it's away, count two and one. Two balls, one strike, one out. I'll give you 
Tiger, we're going to give you some updates from around the Atlantic League in just one moment after the 2-1 pitch here to Sandoval. As Herrera, who normally wor works rather quickly, working more slowly today. 2-1, popped up foul, third base side, count 2-2. Two two. York over High Point, 2-0 in the bottom of the second. Lexington over Wild Hell, 4-0 in the bottom of the first inning. Long Island and Staten Island at 4, and Gastonia and Charleston at 5. Nothing left to be decided in the playoffs, as that's all set. But just the final records for both teams. We'll give you some updates from scores around the big leagues as well. Two balls, two strikes, and one out. And the 2-2 offering is inbound. Swing a high fly ball, shallow right center field. It's the center fielder Sunberg who ranges over and makes the catch for the second out. He fires over to third, but it's the shortstop Baca who cuts it off. As the runner on second base, Hoover wasn't going anywhere. So runners remain on first and second with two outs now for Andretti Cordero, who we've said on a number of occasions, occasions is the most dangerous hitter in this Lancaster batting order. And a solo home run his last time up has three home runs in this series, one in each game. 18 on the year. Not to mention that 339 batting average. And the pitch. Swing and a miss, breaking ball, he was out in front of it. No balls, one strike. And the 0-1 pitch, a little away, count one ball and one strike. Let's right, see if we have anything else in our YouTube chat. Orioles fan, well Tammy Shipley first. Good afternoon Blue Crabs friends, I'll go with 141 also. Wes should know, go Blue Crabs. Orioles fan, Sugarland with 95 in 2013. Orioles fan might just be on the right track here. And I'll give you all another inning to answer that question. Count two balls, one strike, and two outs. Two balls and one strike from Elsis Herrera. Pitch, swing and a miss, count two and two now. In the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's give you some scores from around the big leagues now. It's the White Sox who are on top of the Tigers, seven to four. Rays over the Rangers, 4-1. That's in the top of the fifth. The Red Sox and Royals all square at two in the top of the third. Marlins won nothing over the Nats. It's the Braves who are on top of the Phillies in the bottom of the third, 1-0. Scoreless between the Orioles and the Blue Jays. That's in the top of the third. The Twins won nothing over the Guardians in the middle of the fourth. The Mets lead the Pirates, 3-0. Pitch popped up. Third base side, long run for Santiago Chirino. He reaches over the railing. Did he make the catch? No, he could not. Long run for the third baseman who moment to find out where he was with, with relation to the wall. And when he reached over, just a tiny bit late in getting there. Good effort, though, from the third baseman, Santiago Chirino, who is one of the best defenders in the Atlantic League over at third base. Well, that's lead the Pirates 3-0. The Brewers over the Yankees 3-0. Astros and Athletics are scoreless. The Reds and Cardinals The Rockies have a 1-0 lead over the Cubs. Mariners, Angels, Padres, Diamondbacks, and Dodgers, Giants all later today. 2-2 two -two pitch, foul off, first base side. And the count, two balls and two strikes. Number of games in progress in the NFL, so we appreciate you joining us here on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network for the Blue Crabs. Well, there's some football action going on. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. A little bit up and away. Count three balls and two strikes.
Two on, two out. Full count on Cordero. Herrera trying to work out of the inning. And Orioles fan said, it's the same year I went to a Skeeter's ball game against Somerset and was selected as fan of the game prior to attending the Orioles Astros series. Orioles took two out of three. Sounds like a lot of fun. Going to the Orioles Astros and then the Sterling Skeeters down in Texas. 3-2 pitch. Foul ball, third base side. It makes sense to AAA the ball club right there. It's a AAA level facility. Uh, Sugarland, from my understanding, is a pretty big city. And of course, Somerset, now a the affiliate of the New York Yankees, the Double A affiliate. Three-two pitch to Cordero. High fly ball, shallow right center. Now Sunberg goes back deeper toward the warning track. He makes the catch in front of the UPMC sign to end the inning. Well, Lancaster Barnstormer has picked up a couple of base runners. They strand two, they score none. At the end of four, it's the Blue Crabs who trail 4-1 on the hometown real estate broadcast network. Happy birthday, Tom. Here at Clipper Magazine Stadium, we're saying happy birthday to the following to Mason Abel. Also, J.D. Abel, happy birthday to Rowan DeMarco, and happy birthday to Benny. question. Um, so this is one we've sort of talked about throughout the course of the season. Oh, Michael Baca steps in as we are underway in the top of the fifth inning. First pitch is low and the count one ball and no strikes. It's been a bit of a tough go for Baca more recently at the plate. Today and yesterday he's 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. And the pitch, called strike, count one and one. Four one Lancaster, one run in the third and three in the second for the Barnstormers. Blue Crabs actually got the scoring started today with a run in the second. And the pitch on the ground, fielded on the backhand by the second baseman. 
That's Trace Lair who fires the first in time. And there is one away. Ball was hit toward the middle. But a really nice backhanded play by Trace Lair to get the out. Here comes Jack Sundberg, who's 0 for 2 so far on the day. This is a Blue Crabs team that is merely 3 for 15 with nine strikeouts today. Nine strikeouts in the first four and a third innings. So D, D Sabatino goes four. They go to the bullpen as Brett Clark enters and pitches a little low and away. Count 1 and 0. From a Blue Crabs pitching perspective, it does not appear as though the Blue Crabs have anybody up in a hurry. And the pitch, called strike, count one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Here is the delivery. Swing and a miss, count. One and two now on Sunbird. Sunbird restraps the batting gloves. Base paths are empty. The one two delivery. Oh, it's called strike three. Sunbird doesn't like the call, but. It's the home plate umpire, John Lamantino, who rings him up, and there are two away. And the Blue Crabs only have three hits across the first four and two thirds as Michael Wolanski digs it. By and large, Wolanski, an extremely good contact hitter with some extra pop on the bat, hits the ball very hard. And the pitch. Upstairs, count one and oh. One ball, no strikes, and two outs. And the pitch, it's low. The count, two balls and no strikes. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. Clark comes set. Here is the 1-0. Line drive, right center field. This ball falling, but not fast enough as Chris Proctor is there in right center to make the catch. A 1-2-3 inning from Brett Clark. The Blue Crabs go down in order. They still trail 4-1 as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Talked about how the Blue Crabs had a chance at setting the all-time winning percentage record for a single season. Didn't quite get there. But the question is, over the course of a 140-game season, what's the most wins in Atlantic League history? Uh, my guess, I want to say 90, 90 wins. 90 wins, yeah. final answer? That's my guess, yeah. All right, well, we're going we're gonna to reveal the answer on the broadcast. I'll tell you right once we're finished here with this pregame show, David. On to the next one. This is the your opinion uh, segment of our pregame show. And, David, the question today is one we've talked about a little bit in the past, and I'm going to let you know what some of your teammates have said for this one, but it is if you move an MLB team out of the United States and out of Canada, what country or city is that team headed to? I'm going to guess somewhere in Mexico. And uh, I would like to say, I don't know if I'm allowed to give two answers, but sure, go ahead. Let's, <laughs> let's hear it. I'm, I'm going to say uh, Mexico City is one of them. Okay. Or uh, Guadalajara. And that's yep. the other one in Mexico as well. So those are my two guesses. All right. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure, but that's, that's my guess. Have you played in a foreign country before? I have actually played in Mexico, and I've also played in Australia as well. So it, and it's pretty, pretty neat. I've also been into the Dominican Republic as well, too. Does the Dominican Republic have a shot here, or they probably don't have quite as good of a shot at hosting an MLB franchise? Oh, man, now you got, you're, getting my question, you're getting my questions a little bit. Uh, you're getting my answer just a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm questioning my answer. <laughs> <that> I, <laughs> uh, Take your time. What, 
Oh man. Yes, no, maybe. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, I'm gonna stick to my gut. I, it could be the Dominican Republic, knowing that we do have a lot of teams, but I'm gonna stick to my gut due to traveling. Right. And right. So my my opinion is gonna stick with Mexico still as well. Gotcha. Just to give you an idea of what some of your teammates went with here, okay. we had Michael Wolanski. He said, "Let's go to uh, Japan." Okay. Ryan Haug said he wants to expand baseball to England, okay. so he's putting a team in London. All right. Uh, and Joe DeLuca was generally on the same train of thought with Mexico and the Dominican Republic. Yeah, and, that, and that's fair, and that's fair. I just say those two, when it comes to the Dominican Republic and Mexico, it's just because they're a lot closer. Right, right. You know what I mean? Japan and the, and the other one, England. Oh, we are back in the bottom of the fifth inning. Had a chance to listen to a little more of that interview with David Harris about where he wants to put that other team in the MLB or outside the U.S. and Canada. As the pitch is in there for a called strike on Anderson Police, count 0-1. 0-1 oh, pitch. That's low, count 1-1. One one. Pitch count for Alsis Herrera is rather high as he has thrown now 94 pitches. 56 for strikes. Count 1-1. One and one. Pitch called strike, count one and two. Four one Lancaster, one run in the second, th uh, I beg your pardon, one run for the Blue Crabs in the top of the second. Three runs for Lancaster in the bottom of the second. One, two, pitch swing and a miss and a pitch low on the dirt. And Anderson Police strikes out. So again, Blue Crabs score one in the top of the second. Lancaster scores three in the bottom of the second. They add one more on a solo home run from Andretti Cordero in the fifth. Brett Clark. And Brett Clark will come to the plate as the pitcher bats after Di Sabatino had exit the ball game. One away with the base paths empty in the bottom of the fifth pitch called strike. Orioles fan also offers Puerto Rico as a possibility. I'm a fan of that as well. Though you have to question, is that outside the U.S. or not? I mean, it kind of is, it kind of isn't. I mean, it's a territory of the U.S., so... I'd say it somewhat qualifies. Pitch on the ground over to second base. Wolanski's got it. He fires to first, and there are two away. I think if the U.S. and Cuba had good relations there, and there were not political issues that separated the two countries, I think Cuba would be a terrific option for a team. I think the Dominican Republic, another good option. And Mexico, you're going to go out, if you're going to go outside of the U.S. and Canada, I'd have to think Mexico and the Dominican Republic are one and two because of political reasons that separate Cuba. Otherwise, I think Cuba would definitely be in the conversation there as another one of those possible destinations. And the first pitch. A little bit inside in the count one ball and no strikes. Orioles fan mentions that um, he got a t-shirt for the fan of the game. And the pitch, ground ball over to second. Fielded between the legs by Wolanski. He fires the first in time. Alsis Herrera had some trouble over the first four innings. He has a one, two, three, fifth inning. As he retires the Barnstormers in order. We go to the top of the sixth. Herrera throws 100 pitches. We'll step aside when we come back. It's the top of the sixth inning. The Blue Crabs will look to get the bats going. little ways so I don't know that if the traveling would be that great for uh, MLB <laughs> last one here a couple of your teammates are playing for Team Great Britain right now Raul Shaw and Alex Crosby and a couple of former teammates as well with Kent Blackstone and Mackenzie Mills they've won back-to-back -back games now they are one win away from going to the World Baseball Classic have any words for some of your teammates hey you guys keep doing it man uh, 
We're really proud of you guys. You guys are repping us like highly, my man. It just shows what we're doing over here and with the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs. You guys keep balling out, and best of luck to you guys. Keep uh, doing the little things right, and you guys are going to get there, man. Best of luck to you guys. All right. Thanks, David. Really appreciate it. Oh, you bet, my man. Thank you so much. We got to listen to the end of that conversation with David Harris, who discussed uh, the Blue Crabs. Uh, some of the Blue Crabs players were headed over to Great Britain, who are, I guess, representing Great Britain, not going there. They're in uh, Germany for now. We'll be back for game three of the playoffs as the pitch is up and away. Count one ball and no strikes. The Blue Crabs are a team that has really thrived with players like. Alex Crosby, Mackenzie Mills, he was back with the team. Raul Shah has put up some good numbers this year as well. As the 1 0 pitch is away, count 2 0 now on Walker. Patrick Baker is up and warming here in the sixth. Pitch high, pop up, shallow left field. It's the shortstop, Jake Hoover, who drifts back onto the outfield grass and makes the catch for the first out. And Joe DeLuca, who bats from the left side against the right-handed pitcher, Brett Clark. As he will step in. And Joe DeLuca digs in from the left side. First pitch, swinging a line drive, well struck, rather deep to left center, back to the warning track, reaching up, it's the left fielder Carpenter who makes the catch. Robbing extra bases from Joe DeLuca on one of the best hit balls all day. But a terrific catch by Joseph Carpenter in the left field, reaching up, making the catch and laying out for the out. DeLuca hit that ball north of 100 miles an hour out to left. But Carpenter there for the catch. At Regency Furniture Stadium, that's probably a home run over the Mini Monster, but here the left field wall is very deep, and right field, that ball was hit same spot, same way, way out of here. Left field very deep here at Clipper Magazine Stadium. And the pitch called strike, count 0-1. Uh, Santiago Chirino, who is 0 for 1, but he has been hit by a pitch. 0 1 delivery is low, count 1 and 1. And I, I think that you look back through today's ball game. One run on three hits. Uh, Blue Crabs had two hits yesterday. And when you look at the two hits they had in, the, in this one, swinging a ground ball down the first baseline, it's a base hit. Pass. And Andretti Cordero at first base who reached out toward the line as that one hugged the first base line. It's a single for Chirino with two outs as Matt Hibbert will come to the plate. So Hibbert will come to the plate as he follows Santiago Chirino. 
Chirino now has a five game hit streak. But what I was talking about moments ago, how hard hit are these base hits for the Blue Crabs? And how, how, how hard hit are most of the line drives today? And it seems like the numbers are better today. Hibbert shows bunt. He pulls back, and it's a strike, despite the fact that the catcher, Anthony Peroni, didn't catch the ball. It's still a called strike anyway, and the count 0 1. DeLuca has one that was hit 100, another that was hit 98. Sundberg hit 194 miles an hour. Haug at 92. Wolanski at 91, and Haug at 90. So there's quite a few that are hit 90 plus. Yesterday was just two. And the 0 2 pitch is in there for a strike, and the count 0 2. And that at least shows better contact. And when you look at a team that scored a total of three runs now over the course of what's, you know, nearly three games, the pitch. Line drive slowly over toward first. They go to second for the lead out. Well done by Andretti Cordero, recognizing the play at first was going to be tough. He fired to the shortstop, Jake Hoover, who was covering second for the lead out as his momentum was taking him in that direction. Well, that ends at the top of the sixth inning. The Blue Crabs picked up one hit. They strand one at the end of five and a half. It's 4-1 Lancaster. When we come back, the Lancaster Barnstormers will come to bat against a new pitcher for the Blue Crabs. Stick with us. This is Nick Wells, and you're listening to the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. Come stay at the Holiday Inn Express Waldorf, where teamwork makes the dream work. A proud sponsor of the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs and your home away from home. The Holiday Inn Express is located at 11,370 Days Court. That's 11370 Days Court Waldorf near the Waldorf Shoppers World Shopping Center. Call 301-932-9200 to make a reservation or look us up at IHG.com or on the IHG app. Come put your feet up and enjoy the complimentary free breakfast and indoor heated pool at the Holiday Inn Express Waldorf. Joseph Carpenter comes to the plate in the bottom of the sixth inning as Patrick Baker comes to the mound for the Blue Crabs. First pitch well struck. Right center field this one back to the warning track. It is off the wall. Yetzko plays it. He fires into the cutoff man Wolanski but it's a leadoff double from Joseph Carpenter and a runner on second base with nobody out. It's one of the major differences between here and Southern Maryland. That might be a fly out in Southern Maryland. Tough to say for sure. It might split the gap and get all the way to the wall. But 
to Paul that at least you have a chance on. You've got a guy like Will, a guy like Braxton Lee who plays out there in right field every day. And you're in Southern Maryland. That might be a ball that's caught, but here it certainly is not. It's an extra base hit off the wall in right. We'll give you some of the numbers on Patrick Baker in just one moment. Following the first pitch of Jake Hoover, called strike on a hard fastball. Patrick Baker, 5-2, a 1.97 ERA, the whip at 1.11. His last appearance was on September 14th at Long Island. One inning, one hit. It's an infield single, no runs, no walks, no hit batsman, and one strikeout. And the pitch. Swing and a miss, count 0-2. No balls and two strikes on Jake Hoover. Hoover takes a couple of practice swings. Now the 0-2. Line drive toward right. This ball falling and falling fast, and it falls in fair territory for extra bases as it goes for an RBI double. <laughs> And it is a 5-1 lead for the Barnstormers as Jake Hoover goes the other way for an RBI double, bringing in Joseph Carpenter on a line drive down the right field line. A double for the righty, or I beg your pardon, to get by him? Now he stands on third base. The throw initially came into second. I thought the play was over. He somehow found his way over to third base. Either way, a run is in, and it's now 5-1. As Baker has certainly found himself in trouble here in the inning. On one ball that's hit pretty hard, and one that's frankly not at all. A lucky blue triple for Jake Hoover. And the pitch a little bit low, and the count one ball and no strikes. Advance a third on the throwing error from Yetzko. I thought that Baca had stopped the ball. I guess he had not. A roll kept on rolling, and the pitch called strike by Trace Lair. And the count one ball and one uh, no balls and one strike on the lefty Lair. Beg your pardon, it's one and one. Runner on third base, nobody out. Infield is in for the Blue Crabs, trailing by four runs. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Count one and two. Certainly not the way the Blue Crabs wanted to end the regular season. A regular season where the Blue Crabs have not been swept all year. And it looks awfully likely that streak will come to an end this afternoon. Trailing by four runs, possibly more by the time this inning is over. With a runner on third base and no one out. One-two pitch. The ground ball over to third. And it's stopped by Santiago Chirino. He looks back, the runner at third, and fires the first. He's about as sure-handed as a third of a third baseman as you will find. Period. The end. A terrific defensive third baseman. That was a hard-hit ball. It was more or less at him, but the ability to stop the ball and then quickly get the ball out of your glove to first base while looking back at the runner all at once, it's not an easy play to make. He made it look easy. Runner on third, one out. Chris Proctor, the leadoff hitter at the plate. First pitch, line drive, left field. This one falling fast, it falls for a base hit. Proctor with a base hit to left. And scoring from third base, it's Jake Hoover. And it is a six to one lead for the Lancaster Barnstormers. The top of the in the bottom of the sixth inning. As things really have gone from bad to worse for this Blue Crabs team. The last thing you want here is to overwork some of your a reliever like Baker, who here who might just be running into trouble and a host of unlucky plays, and that's more or less what he's got himself into here. First base, one out. And a pitch that's low. Count 1-0. I mean, the double off the bat of Carpenter was well hit. 
The devil from Hoover was a blooper that was not well hit. Rather well hit ground out that was snagged by the third baseman, Chirino. And Proctor's single this moments ago hit at 85 miles an hour. So again, not very well hit at all. 1-0 pitch. It's in there for a strike in the count. One ball and one strike. The flag at half mass today. I believe still in remembrance of 9-11, which was commemorated earlier in the week. Of course, the 21st anniversary of that terrible date in American history. 1-1 one, one pitch on the ground over to short. Should be two on a second for one. Back on a first. That's in time. 6-4-3 double play as Ariel Sandoval grounds into two, but not before the Barnstormers score two and have a 6-1 to one lead at the end of six. We go to the top of the seventh. The Blue Crabs bats will really need to come alive if they're looking to avoid their first sweep all year long. This is Michael Baca, and you're listening to the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. Ryan Haug will dig in. He's two for two on the day, a double and a single for the righty as he looks to charge this offense in the top of the seventh inning that's been very quiet. One run on four hits tonight. They have combined over the course of this three-game set just ten total hits. That's how many Lancaster has tonight alone. Pitch upstairs, count 1-0. Oh. Blue Crabs have combined for just three runs in that time frame. Two runs in the first and a 5-2 loss. No runs in game two and a 9-0 shutout. And one run tonight as they trail 6-1. Pitch, pop up, shallow left, long run. This ball is going to fall for a base hit, a blooper for Haug. And he finds himself aboard with nobody out in the top of the seventh. And here comes Ian Yetzko. Ian Yetzko 0 for 2 today. He struck out a couple of times. followed by Michael Baca. We talked about this earlier, how it's tough for someone like Yetzko, who doesn't see live pitching for four to five days. He goes back into the lineup. He's expected to produce right away. and It's not an easy thing to do. Meanwhile, there is action in the Blue Crabs bullpen. Pitch, ground ball over to second. It's fielded by Trace Laird. Does not have a throw to second. He fires the first in time to get Yetzko at the last moment. And there is one away. It is Connor Law who is warming up in the Blue Crabs bullpen. As the Blue Crabs clearly in a lot of trouble here, down by five runs in the seventh as Michael Baca digs in. We followed by Jack Sunberg. The thing about this ballpark is you always have a chance. A fly ball to right field. Could be that simple as far as hitting a home run. 
completely changing the tides in a game. Pitch to Baca. That's called strike in the count 0-1. There are few places in baseball that have a wall or a or dimensions that change the game quite like they do here in Lancaster. 0-1 offering to Baca. Line drive foul back behind home plate to the netting in the count 0-2. Blue Crabs one, Lancaster six. On a Sunday afternoon in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. And the 0-2 is low. Count one ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes, one out. One, two offering up coming to Baca. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. As he goes down on strikes, breaking ball was low and Baca seemingly arguing the strikeout, I'm not quite sure how, why, why he was arguing after he went down swinging. So Haug on second base, he singled and then reached second on the ground out from Yetzko. Strike out to Baca and now it's gonna be Sunberg who will dig in from the left side. Brett Clark's been good. Two and two-thirds innings. He's allowed just a single hit in that time frame. Also struck out two. Check swing from Sunberg, and he managed to go around in the count. 0-1 on the lefty. Top of the seventh inning, six to one, Lancaster as the Blue Crabs try to find their way back here. And the pitch to Sunberg. Ground ball over to second base, fielded by Trace Larry. He's got an easy flip to first, and that ends the top of the seventh inning. Blue Crabs bats really quiet tonight. This afternoon, I guess I should say, it scored one run on five hits, and they trail the Barnstormers six to one. As we go to the bottom of the seventh on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. We're gonna do a little singing with the help. This is Nick Wells, and you're listening to the hometown of Real Estate Rock Next Level. Come stay at the Holiday Inn Express Waldorf, where teamwork makes the dream work. A proud sponsor of the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs, and your home away from home. The Holiday Inn Express is located at 11,370 Days Court. That's 11370 Days Court Waldorf near the Waldorf Shoppers World Shopping Center. Call 301-932-9200 to make a reservation. Look us up at IHG.com on the IHG app. Come put your feet up and enjoy the complimentary free breakfast and indoor heated pool at the Holiday Inn Express, Waldorf.
we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Southern Maryland Blue Crabs go to Connor Law as he faces off against Andretti Cordero and the first pitch. A little bit low on the count, one ball and no strikes. The Blue Crabs go to Baker in the sixth, they go to Law in the seventh. I don't think that this is the order that Stan Clyburn would go in in the playoffs. I think you'd probably see Baker in the seventh and then Dykstra in the eighth and Brisenio in the ninth. 1-0 pitch called strike count one and one. As Andretti Cordero, who bats third, steps in. It'll be Cordero, Feliz, and Barfield for Connor Law to deal with. Pitch called strike, count one and two. Patrick Baker surrendered three runs in the sixth. A hard hit double, a weakly hit double, a ground out, a single, and a double play is what Baker faced in the sixth. As the pitch to Cordero is a little bit low. Count two balls and two strikes. Bottom of the seventh inning, 6-1 Lancaster. Three in the second, one in the third, and two in the sixth. That's the difference in this ball game. It's actually the Blue Crabs who struck first in the top of the second, but nothing since then as the 2-2 pitch is low on the count, three and two. Connor Law comes into this one with a 3.07 ERA. Pitched with the Staten Island Ferry Hawks earlier this season for the vast majority of this season. He just joined the Blue Crabs actually on this road trip. So hasn't actually been back to Waldorf as the pitch, slow ground ball, third base side. It's gonna be a tough play at best, throw to first, they get him. Oh, no, he's off the bag. Oh, a very close play at first base. Connor Law almost made an exceptional throw to first. Now, would have been the defensive play of the ball game, but Jared Walker's cleat was a little bit off the bag. Otherwise, it probably would have been in time. That's one of the things they talk about with bigger bases in the Atlantic League. Back with the smaller bases, Major League Baseball will be advancing to 15-inch bases. I'd imagine the Atlantic League would go back and follow suit. And that makes everything just a little bit closer. It makes the bag a little bit wider as well, so it's easier to keep that foot on the bag and not interfere with runners. And the first pitch is low to Anderson Police, and the count one ball and no strikes. Let's go back over to that YouTube chat, see who else has checked in recently. Well, a question about whether any of the World Baseball Classic players will be here for the rest of the year, or whether they'll be out for the rest of the year in the playoffs. We'll answer that after the 1-0 pitch, which is low and in, and the count 2-0 on Anderson Police. For those of you who are just joining us who might be asking, what about the World Baseball Classic? Well. In Europe right now, there are the World Baseball Classic qualifiers, and for now, it's Alex Crosby and Raul Shah who are over in Germany competing to qualify for the World Baseball Classic. Great Britain is in the winner's bracket, so they had to win just one of their next two games to qualify. Pitch popped up, third base side, long run, and Hibbert will run out of room in foul territory, count two and one. So a game against Spain, and that will decide who gets in from the winner's bracket, and then they will play in the loser's bracket if they lose that game, and if they win the game in the loser's bracket, they'll also qualify. So they need one out of two. That's it for Great Britain. Connor Law comes set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Count two and two. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. So going back to that last point though, Alex Crosby and Raul Shah, the two current Blue Crabs who are over there, will rejoin the Blue Crabs for game three of the playoff series back in Waldorf. 2-2 two -two pitch, ground ball over to third. Chirino throws to second for one, back on to first. It's in time, well scooped by Jared Walker as they go around the horn. Five, four, three for the double play. And again, it's Santiago Chirino, the third baseman, who is so sure-handed, he's got a great arm as well as he fired to second. Michael Belansky over to first base. 
Well, with two away now in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's a 6-1 lead still for the Barnstormers with Brett Clark to the plate. Clark, the pitcher. And the first pitch is low in the count. One ball and no strikes. For those of you who haven't watched much Atlantic League baseball this year, asking about why the pitcher is batting, well, it's back to that old double hook designated hitter rule. If the starting pitcher does not go four innings, all pitchers thereafter would have to bat. So that's the situation with Brett Clark here, who's on the mound for the Barnstormers, and they seem intent on using him deep into this ball game as the 1-0 pitch, a swing and a miss, count 1-1. One one. A game that is, well, meaningless for both teams. Except for the fact the Blue Crabs would suffer their first sweep of the year. They lose today. Have not been swept across 130 30 games, and here in game 131, it might just be that last straw. One-two pitch in there for a strike, count one and two. And they have a lot of work to do if they're trying to avoid the sweep. One-two pitch, swing and a miss. The pitcher, Brett Clark, goes down on strikes. Connor Law faces the minimum in the bottom of the seventh inning. After allowing a leadoff infield single, he gets a double play ball and a strikeout to end things in the bottom of the seventh. 6-1, Lancaster as we go to the top of the eighth. This is Michael Baca, and you're listening to the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. We go to the top of the eighth inning. The first pitch comes into Michael Wolanski. It's a little bit low in the count. One ball and no strikes on the righty. And now the pitch. Swing and a line drive foul. First base side. Count one and one. Six to one in favor of Lancaster over Southern Maryland in the top of the eighth inning as the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs have really struggled to get hits and runs tonight. Looked like they might have rounded a corner when they scored a run in the second inning. On an RBI double from Ryan Haug, pitch line drive toward right, but it's right at the right fielder, Chris Proctor, who makes the catch. I think most ballparks, that's a hit because the right fielder is going to be playing a little further back, but here 
in Lancaster. It's just a line out to shallow right. Ball was hit very well by Michael Wolanski, but that's the way it goes many times. It's baseball. As Jared Walker digs in. Ball hit 104 miles per hour off the bat by Wolanski. Pitch. That's low and in. Count 1 and 0. One ball, no strikes, and one out. Six to one, Lancaster. As Walker digs back in from the left side. So we got our answer to our trivia question. 1-0 pitch is low, count two balls and no strikes. The most wins in Atlantic League history came from the Sugarland Skeeters back in 2013 with 95 wins. Orioles fan. Bingo, right on the money. Not sure the Orioles fan has gotten a um, trivia question right yet. So that's your first on the last game of the season. That's nice. Happy that uh, you're able to get that one right. If you have, I'm sorry. I just didn't recall the last time you got the answer right on for our trivia. But um, good job. Good work. And a, you're right on the money for the answer there. As count two balls and a strike. Bat boy goes and gets the donut off the bat from the on-deck circle or just outside the on-deck circle. Two-one pitch to Jared Walker. Ground ball, first base side foul. The count two and two. Two balls and two strikes with one away. Base paths are empty uh, for Jared Walker. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch, ground ball toward the middle. Backhanded by the second baseman. That's Trace Lair who fires the first in time to get Walker. A really nice defensive play by Trace Lair over at second base the for the second out. The 7693, and Here comes Joe DeLuca. Top of the eighth inning, 6-1 Lancaster. DeLuca followed by the nine hitter in the Blue Crabs lineup. Not the nine hitter, the five hitter, I should say, Santiago Chirino. Chirino with the base hit already today. Pitch to DeLuca, called strike, count 0 and 1. Chirino now has a five game hit streak to start his time with the Blue Crabs. Chirino one for two, DeLuca one for three on the day. Blue Crabs one run on five hits, pitch. Called strike, count 0-2. Strikeout numbers too high again. 11 strikeouts across 27 batters. Blue Crabs as a team hitting south of 200 today. Five for 27 as a group. Clark with the offering upcoming to Joe DeLuca. Here's the 0-2. Swinging a high pop-up. Third base side, long run and foul territory over toward the Blue Crabs bullpen. No one will get there as it falls into the Ivy. And Andretti Cordero. I think your part, I think that's Anderson Feliz. Flipped it into the crowd and a uh, lucky fan. Got it. He didn't actually throw it, he just did the glove flip to the crowd. Count remains 0 2 with two outs in the top of the eighth inning. We are past 3.30 in the afternoon. And the pitch to DeLuca. Top foul, first base side. Count 0-2. Comes DeLuca. 
Stepping back in from the left side. Here's a 2-2. Swinging a high fly ball belted to left center. This one back to the warning track at the wall. It's the center fielder on the run. Ariel Sandoval who tracked it down. Oh my, Joe DeLuca has had a heck of a game. And a terrific catch by Ariel Sandoval. Robs extra bases yet again from Joe DeLuca. So that kind of night for the Blue Crabs, that kind of series for the Blue Crabs. Everything that could go Southern Maryland's way does not. They don't get hits, they don't get runs, and this is sort of the situation you find yourself in. That ball was blasted off the bat of DeLuca, and it's merely a long fly out from Joe DeLuca. Well, that does it. It ends the top of the eighth inning of Blue Crabs. Still trailing this one 6-1 to one as we go to the bottom of the eighth in the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. This is Alex Crosby, and you're listening to the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network. At Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, mortgages are what they do, not who they are. Fairway Mortgage Corporation is a proud partner of the American Warrior Initiative. A key part of this initiative is to educate, encourage, and inspire Americans to give back to our military. Visit their website at www.americanwarriorinitiative.com for more details. Our military fought to protect the American dream. Let's help them live it. like the last inning here in the regular season from the Blue Crabs will come from James Dykstra. The right-hander, he throws hard. Got a good secondary pitch and a breaking ball. First pitch, swing, hard line, drive, right field line. It is a foul ball off the bat of Anthony Peroni. Everything the Blue Crabs have thrown at the, the Barnstormers today has been hit. I mean, you can't point to one pitcher or another who's really had a tough go of things. It doesn't seem to have mattered who's gone out there. Everybody's been hit, whether it's Baker, whether it's even Law allowed an infield single. He's probably had the fair to the best against this, these guys. Pitch popped it up, first base side, count 0-2. And, and Dykstra. Oh, Dykstra has an 0-2 count on. Peroni. Dykstra hasn't allowed a run yet this year with the Blue Crabs. Last time out for the right, he had inning of work. He walked one against Long Island. The pitch, 96, a little up and away. Count one and two. A 
zero ERA and 0 0.8 whip. I'll give you the numbers that the Blue Crabs relievers will have finished the season with in just one moment as the one-two pitch from Dykstra is low and away. Count two and two. Give, give you everybody except Dykstra, or well, Dykstra for now, who has a zero ERA. But Baker, Patrick Baker will finish with a five and two record and a 2.28 ERA. Connor Law will finish with a one and two record and a 3.02 ERA. James Dykstra, Dykstra, if he does not allow a run here, will keep his zero ERA. Brisenio, five and zero, oh, a 0 0.76 earned run average and a 0 0.82 whip. Two two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Nice breaking ball, low and away gets Peroni swinging, and there are there is one away. Uh, Dalton Geeky will finish with a one and three record, his ERA of 4.69 with a 1.68 whip. Matt Latos four and three, a 4.46 ERA, a 137 whip. Finishes with 24 saves on the year, as Connor Law. I beg your pardon, we've already gone through Connor Law. Polanco's three and zero. Oh, a 6.75 ERA, a 1.86 whip, and Nick Wells 3-3 three three with a 4.66 earned run average, a whip of 1.53. Pitch strike, that's on the outside corner on Anthony Peroni, and the count 0-1. Look, look at some of the velocity for the Blue Crabs relievers. Ba Patrick Baker hit 97.1 earlier today, 0-1 pitch. A little bit upstairs in the count, one ball and one strike. Dykstra has hit 96.4. And well, that last one actually hit 97.9. That might be the hardest pitch we've seen this year from a Blue Crabs pitcher. I've seen, I've seen uh, the Blue Crabs reliever Endres Brisenio go 97.8. I haven't seen 97.9 this year. As the pitch is a little away, count two and one. Connor Law topped out at 95.1, and James Dykstra at 97.9. And the 2-1 pitch, a little bit low, count three and one. Alcis Herrera at 86.7 on the velocity. the pitch from Dykstra. Swing on a line drive to right center off the bat of Joseph Carpenter. Yikes go back to the wall and he jumps and is not going to get it. Ricochets off the wall. It's Sundberg who plays that out in right center and fires in. And there are two away. In the uh, There's one away in the bottom of the eighth with a one out double off the bat of Joseph Carpenter. I'll tell you, the Barnstormers really use that right field wall effectively, whether it's home runs, whether it's doubles, extra base hits. The ability to use that right field wall effectively and just the dimensions at large here at Clipper Magazine Stadium. You've got, you got an outfielder that has to play in because the wall is so shallow and you know a base hit might not fall, but if you hit anything deep, out of the ballpark or it's off the wall and that's what the Barnstormers have been able to do. Just lazy fly balls to right are extra base hits. One oh, the first pitch is upstairs, count 1-0 and oh from James Dykstra. Runner on second base. That's Joseph Carpenter who had a one out double to right. And the pitch popped up foul on the count one and one. Uh, seriously fast pitches here from Dykstra. 97.4 and 96.6 in the last two fastballs. It's real heat right there. This is a guy that's touched 100 in the past. 100.3. Here's a video of him online hitting that north of 100 miles an hour as the pitch is a little away. Count two and one. That's when he was with the Blue Jays organization. It was 100.3 miles per hour to be exact from James Dykstra.
Count two and one on Jake Hoover. And the two off. Swing and a miss. Count two and two. A really nice breaking ball that catches Jake Hoover off balance. Hoover now three for three on the day. Seen his batting average rise to 255. Some scores from around the Atlantic League. 5 2 high point in the top of the uh, 5 2 York over high point in the top of the sixth. In the bottom of the fourth, the battle for Lexington as Wild Hotel leads 7 to 6. Staten Island and Long Island will be starting shortly along with Gastonia and Charleston as the 2 2 pitch is fouled off first base side from Jake Hoover. 6 1 Lancaster. That's been the way this thing has gone for a while now. Blue Crabs had a 1 0 lead in the second, but Lancaster has. Not looked back since then after taking the lead in the bottom of the second. And they have done nothing but take a commanding lead since the second inning. Pitching has been outstanding. Yet again, the bats have been very quiet for the Blue Craps. And the 2-2 pitch. Called strike three. DeLuca didn't catch the ball, but he's called out on strikes. I'm sure that'll be a pass ball against DeLuca. And the runner advances from second to third. That being Joseph Carpenter as Trace Lair will come to the plate. Well, Blue Crabs will have the final three batters coming to the plate as Dolphin Geeky now warms. I'd imagine he's getting a bullpen in. Here in the ninth inning. Dykstra. The pitch to Lair. Fastball a little bit up and away. Count 1-0. Yeah, Dykstra hit 98.4 moments ago. Happy to see if we can talk to Dykstra post game about the velocity because it's up a couple of ticks. And nearly 99 here. Pitch fouled off. Third base side, 98.4. Normally, if you round up 98 and a half and up is considered 99. So, I mean, this, this are some of the hardest pitches we've seen from any Blue Crab. Count one and one as the 1 0 pitch was fouled off third base side. One ball, one strike, two outs. Pitch, ground ball over to second base. This should do it. It's, Wol it's Wolanski who fields between the legs and fires the first in time to get Trace Lair. And that ends the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, the Blue Crabs do not surrender a run in the bottom of the eighth inning thanks to a strong inning from James Dykstra who allows just one hit. And strands a runner on third base. We go to the top of the ninth. It's 6-1 Lancaster on the Hometown Real Estate Broadcast Network.
what is likely the final half inning of the Blue Crabs regular season. And the first pitch is a called strike to Santiago Chirino as we are underway in the top of the ninth. Six to one, Lancaster over Southern Maryland. As the 0-1 offering to Chirino. A little bit low and away, awfully close though. In the count, one ball and one strike on the righty. A look back at this season where the Blue Crabs had a 12-game winning streak in the first half. They followed it up with a seven-game winning streak. 1-1 one, one pitch is a little low. They count 2-1. and one. As pitcher on the mound for the Lancaster Barnstormers, still Brett Clark here back out for his fifth inning of work. 2-1 pitch. Count 2-2. Two and two. But you look back again at that seven-game win streak and all the success the Blue Crabs had in the first half, a 48-18 and 18 record in the first half, setting an all-time Atlantic League record for the best winning percentage in a half at 727. Pitch popped up, first base side foul, count two and two. The Blue Crabs pitching staff that has really led the way for this team. I mean, they've had some big performances at the plate at times, but if you look on the whole front, what's really driven this team, it's been a pitching staff that has been really outstanding in the Atlantic League as the 2-2 pitch is fouled off first base side. The starting pitching between Thompson and Lampson and Merrithew. Alex Merrithew, a guy who was at the back of the bullpen to start the year and has found himself in what very well may be a playoff start on Friday night. We'll have to see, but definitely a chance that that is the case. And Eddie Butler, the former big leaguer, made his imprint on the season as well as the 2-2 pitches upstairs to Chirino, count three and two. I see some changes on the pitching staff as well. Alcis Herrera, who makes the start tonight and has been a mainstay in the Blue Crabs rotation for the past month or so. And all the while having a bullpen that's the best in the Atlantic League. Pitch ground ball over to first base. Snagged by the first baseman, Andretti Cordero, who will step on the bag, and there's one away. 6-1 Lancaster with one out in the top of the ninth. Over Southern Maryland. To see David Harris finish with a batting average north of 320. Braxton Lee, who has hit 300 for the better part of the second half at 306. That's where he will finish the regular season. A 34 game on base streak, courtesy of Jack Sundberg here in the second half. The Blue Crabs using. Three catchers here as Mike Falsetti had to come in and play at catcher, who was originally thought to be that bullpen catcher as the first pitch is upstairs to Matt Hibbert and made his imprint on this team. 1-0 pitch. Upstairs, count 2-0. The work that Darrell Thompson has done with his pitching staff, not only from what he's done on the mound, but what he's done as a pitching coach done wonders to help bring this team along. 2-0 pitch, called strike in the count, 2-1 on the inside corner. Endres Brisenio, who might have just posted one of the best seasons a relief pitcher has ever had in the Atlantic League. A 0.77 ERA, a whiff just north of a 0.8 pitch. Upstairs, count 2-2, two two, or 3-1, I should say, on, on Hibbert. With one away in the top of the ninth. And extends at every position. You see the Blue Crabs and what they've managed to do over the course of this 2022 season. And luckily for Southern Maryland, they're not quite done yet. They've got the playoffs starting on Tuesday as the 3-1 pitch is upstairs as ball four. As we wrap up the regular season in the Atlantic League. All of you in the YouTube chat. So we really need to thank those of you who have joined us watching Blue Crabs games over the course of the past five months or so. And those of you who have been involved in the YouTube, we really, really appreciate it. Susan H. says, do you guys stay in Lancaster tomorrow or go back and forth again? The team will be staying in Lancaster tomorrow. I have to make my own trip back home. Uh, but I will be back on Tuesday, of course, for the playoffs. But the team will be staying in Lancaster. And the first pitch to... Ryan Haug is a called strike, a three for three day for the Blue Crabs catcher who's at the D8 spot tonight. 
Runner on first base and one out against Brett Clark. Well, Southern Maryland will need to get some outstanding pitching. If they're looking to win that series of coming against the Barnstormers, the pitch called strike and the count 0 and 2 now on Ryan Haug. It doesn't get any bigger than the three the Blue Crabs will play on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, and if necessary, on Saturday and Sunday as well. O2 pitch upcoming, but Clark will step off. The championship series would be the Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of the following week. So the playoffs will go into October for those teams that are in the championship. 0-2 pitches low, count one and two. Bring these broadcasts alive to you throughout the course of this season. It's a season that has included a lot of ups for this Blue Crabs team, a couple of downs, and now they are two outs away from being swept for the first time all year. Certainly not what the Blue Crabs were looking to finish on as the pitch Popped up foul behind home plate. Count remains one and two on Ryan Haug. With a runner on first and one out. Blue Crabs trailing six to one. A 5-2 loss in game one. A 9-0 loss in game two. And also Serrera pitched all right tonight. Six innings of, or five innings of work allowing four runs. But uh, the Blue Crabs bats were not able to get the job done. Five innings, seven hits, four runs, two walks from Herrera Baker. An inning, three hits, and two runs. As that pitch is popped up, first base side foul count remains one and two. And Baker's been really, really good for a very large percentage of this year. It's just the short, rough patch there in the sixth. Pitch to Ryan Haug. Ground ball to third. This could do it on a second for one. Back on to first. Five, four, three, double play. Ends the game. It ends the series. It ends the regular season for the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs, who fall six to one tonight to the Lancaster Barnstormers. It's the first time all year the Blue Crabs have been swept in a series. 6-1 is your final. We'll run through the box scores. We're going to run through the pitching line. And I wish you a farewell for the regular season, but we're not done. The Blue Crabs go into the postseason. So nothing to hang your head on after this terrific year where the Blue Crabs set a franchise record for the most wins in a season. The Lancaster. Southern Maryland. Let's start with Southern Maryland here. 0 for 4 for Sunbury. 0 for 4 for Wolanski. Hit the ball hard a couple of times again, though. And that ends Sunberg's on base streak at nine consecutive. Polanski over four, Walker over three. He didn't walk once. One through three were one for 11 tonight with five strikeouts and a walk. DeLuca was one for four. Chirino one for three. Hibbert over two. He did walk twice. Howe was three for four. Yetzko over three with two strikeouts. Baca over three with two strikeouts. Final batting averages for the Blue Crabs bats. Sudberg at 246. Molanski 269. Walker 236. DeLuca was 261. Chirino at 368. Hibbert finishes at 244. Hauga at 266. Yetzko at 255. And Baca at 216. Herrera goes five innings, seven hits, four runs, two walks, two strikeouts, and a home run. Herrera finishes with a 3.03 ERA. Patrick Baker, an inning, three hits, two runs. He finishes with a 2.28 earned run average. And Connor Law goes an inning of scoreless baseball. He did allow an infield single. He struck out one. He'll finish with a 3.02 ERA. James Dykstra, another scoreless inning of baseball. He did allow a one-out double, but struck out a pair tonight for the Blue Crabs. Andres Braseno did not pitch here in the postseason, or not a bigger part, did not post here in, pitch here in this last series. He will, I'm sure, pitch in the postseason for the Blue Crabs. Southern Maryland will take on the Lancaster Barnstormers on Tuesday for game one of the postseason. Run through. Your scoring plays today, Ryan Howe doubled to bring in a run. It was 
Santiago Chirino, who scored after getting hit by a pitch early in the second inning. But in the bottom of the second, it was Joseph Carpenter who doubled. And he scored Jacob Barfield. Then it was Jake Hoover who doubled and scored Anthony Peroni. And then a ground out that brought home Joseph Carpenter to give Lancaster a 3-1 lead. Andretti Cordero homer to give Lancaster a 4-1 lead. It was Jake Hoover who doubled on a line drive to right against Patrick Baker. And that brought in... Joseph Carpenter, who had doubled prior, and Christopher Proctor with a single to left that brought in Jake Hoover. 6-1 final for the Lancaster Barnstormers over Southern Maryland. We wish everybody a terrific Sunday afternoon. Check in with the YouTube chat one last time. As Tammy Shipley says, Austin, I can think of all, uh, I can think I can speak for all of us and say thank you. Well, I appreciate it, I really do, Tammy. And uh, Tammy, I appreciate Having you always join us here in the YouTube chat. Orioles fans saying, wishing the Blue Crabs well in the playoffs. Got to win. I Got to win so I can see them all down here in Gastonia. Go Blue Crabs. Well, hopefully the Blue Crabs can get there. We'll be playing the Honey Hunters in that championship series. Thank you to everybody who has supported us and supported the broadcast over the course of the season. We really appreciate it. Have a terrific afternoon. And we finish every broadcast as always with the same four words. Let's go Blue Crabs. <laughs>